bed before midnight. Uh, so therefore, I can see everyone going scared shitless now, going, what? Um, okay, let me just introduce myself. My name is John Dwyer, but I haven't got John for a few years. I get JD, so if I refer to myself in the uh, presentation as JD, you'll know who I'm talking about. Uh, the other name that I get normally is Dickhead, so therefore uh, you'll work out which one is more appropriate, I'm sure, in the next 10, 15 minutes. Um, can I just ask, before we kick off, if I could uh, ask you to raise your hands if you're in the B to C business. In other words, you sell to people, business consumer. Who sells to people? Uh, okay, so therefore, just so I get a good handle, I think it's two thirds probably, who sells to businesses B to B? Okay, it looks like it might be 60% consumers and 40% the other. Uh, okay, yep, sure. Uh, can I ask you uh, also um, to uh, answer this survey question? Who thinks that um, you need to uh, have a good product or service to make money? It's sort of a given, isn't it, that you need a good product or service, everyone agrees? Okay, who thinks McDonald's makes the best hamburger in the world? You don't need a good product or a good service, but you do need good, starts with M, marketing. Yep. Uh, and by the way, if there isn't any better participation than this, normally what happens is I chuck a sissy fit and just leave. So um, so can we maybe get, uh, um, how about we do this? I'll just say good morning, everybody, and you give us a big boisterous good morning, JD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, JD. Okay, it's so obscure, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it amazing you get these damn microphones and all of a sudden you've got all this stupid power, it's ridiculous because I could be an idiot and you've just wasted a morning. Wouldn't that be good? Uh, okay, so therefore the reason that uh, you're here today, I suspect, is that uh, you own a business and uh, you are probably pretty keen on learning new ways to attract new clients. Would that be fair to say? Okay, and uh, who at the moment would be advertising on uh, social media, let's say mainly Facebook? Anybody advertising on Facebook who's doing that? And keep your hand up if you're a bit pissed off that it's not working as well as you'd like it to. Everyone's got their hands still up, okay. Well, I think you might find you're in the right place because what we'll do today is show you how we believe you should use Facebook. Um, and it's a way that not many people are using. Um, some people are, but not many. Uh, and it's all about uh, what we call a two-step sell procedure. And it's all about making sure that you go down the path of collecting data before you sell it to them. And we'll show you how to do that. Um, it's amazing that Facebook, even in their own tutorials, don't quite go through that with you. Um, okay, so therefore, the other thing I wanted to ask you is that um, who thinks that having sales or marketing skills uh, is probably the most important thing in business because if you don't sell anything, you've got no business. And then we're going to do a little trick game here. Who has an accountant? Everybody, keep your hands up. You've got a solicitor? Everyone's got their hand up? And you just told me 30 seconds ago that the most important thing in your business is having sales or marketing skills, which is just common sense. Who has anyone? advising them on sales and marketing. And God's watching, so therefore, yep, one, two, three, okay, out of all this room here, um, you've just, 100% of you said, yeah, having sales or marketing skills is the most important thing, and yet only three or four of you actually got anyone advising you on marketing skills. Pretty weird, isn't it? It's really, really crazy. And the reason for that is, is that when you go to uni, it doesn't matter what vintage you are, when you go to uni, uh, you know that you pop out after that three or four or five years with a really, you know, nice bit of paper, and you're fully qualified to become uh, a dentist or chiropractor or whatever it may be. But throughout uni, uh, I've got six Gen Y kids, and so they tell me this, that throughout uni, not once are they ever taught anything about marketing. So you end up with a doctor's certificate or a dentist or whatever you might be, but then you've got to work out how to get people to come to your dentist. And uh, a phrase I saw the other day from an American, it was really uh, quite interesting. He said that the marketing of what you do is 100 times more important than what you do. It's pretty important, it's pretty, isn't that the case? I mean, the marketing of what I do is a hundred times more important to me of what I do, because that's what, if I didn't fill this room, I've got no chance of making any money. So it's the marketing of what I do that got you here. It's not what necessarily what I do. For you it is now what I do, but for me, if I have to do this to an empty room, then I'm an idiot. Uh, and you know what the game plan is here, by the way, so therefore um, you guys have got free tickets to come to an event. Likewise, anyone on Facebook Live's got the same free ticket. Uh, and you know that um, I don't do this because I'm Mother Teresa's cousin. Uh, I do this to make money. And so therefore, who's expecting that there might be some sort of pitch at the end of this? Well, you won't be disappointed. Um, and it's funny, you know, there's one guy, some troll got on the Facebook thing the other day and said, oh, there's free events. I bet you they're going to try and sell something. And I just want to type back, but, you know, my sarcasm is alive and well. I want to say, oh, mate, you're a genius. No, I just do this because I've got nothing else to do, you moron. You know, of course there's going to be a sell, for God's sake, you know. And what you ought to think about is uh, looking at this model and seeing how you can use it yourself because this is called uh, sell once to many. 
And uh, by the way, you're going to get a whole bucket load of good information. In fact, probably information and, 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 and format or formulas, I should say, that you just won't get anywhere else. And I know you get that from all sorts of speakers, but you won't get this stuff anywhere else in the world. So you can come here today and leave and, you know, you got it for free. Um, and if you do uh, want to complain, that's fine. We have a money back guarantee. So, uh, you know, you came in for free. Um, okay, so therefore, let me ask you this. At the moment, um, who is in a bricks and mortar situation? Were they in a bricks and mortar business, like a shop or a, an office, or who's in that game? Okay, only a few of us. Right here. Okay. Right here. So we'll kick off. The name of my business is the Institute of Wow, and uh, the reason we call it that is because it's all about wow factor marketing. Um, you don't want to be selling on price. Who here at the moment gets a little bit peed off with themselves when they have to drop price to get money. Uh, you know, that's just not what you want to do. And I was saying to uh, someone this morning just in there, that if I was running the Palazzo Versace Hotel on the Gold Coast, then winter time, instead of dropping my prices uh, by 50%, uh, and then for you know taking my brand from the penthouse to the shithouse, uh, uh, what I'd be doing is saying to everyone from Melbourne and Sydney, why don't you come up to the Gold Coast during the colder months, and we'll give you a free pickup uh, limousine service from the airport, We'll give you free butler service throughout the weekend. They just put a couple of butlers downstairs and we'll give you tickets to the theme parks. Now, that won't cost them anything like half price their tariff, but it will protect, starts with B, it will protect their brand, okay? So what you're about to learn here today is direct response marketing uh, with a wow factor pixie dust on top. And uh, I know that most of you would see that direct response marketing might be the likes of the Kerry Ann show of the morning, where it's the ab swings and uh, it's all that sort of corny stuff and you get quite a few of them after midnight. This is the same sort of principles, but with a different tonality. So the difference is, is that if we have the Hilton Hotel on board, then we'll make sure that their direct response marketing will be something like I just mentioned to you. Whereas if it happens to be the abswing people, then of course it will look like the TV commercials you see in the morning. So the thing that you should look at as we go through some case studies, because that's essentially what this you know, presentation is all about, just case study, case study, case study, so you know it's real. Um, then you will find that uh, each occasion we've toned the direct response marketing to suit that business. So if you're an upmarket accountant, uh, then of course the tonality, tonality for you will be very professional, uh, very upmarket. The toning on your website and so forth will be very similar to you know, what you see around the room here, the browns and, and executive colours. But if you happen to be uh, a, a carnival or Luna Park, then of course it will be Disneyland style. Everybody understand the importance of tonality? It's called message to market match. You want to make sure that your message is uh, reaching the right market in the right way. Now, uh, talk about wow factor. I've got to give this hotel some credit because we came up last night from the Gold Coast and stopped here. And around about uh, five minutes uh, after getting into the room, there was a knock at the door. And I opened the door and uh, there was a guy there dressed up in the whole gear from the hotel with a silver plate and had this on it. And it was a strawberries all cut up with a chocolate fondue. Uh, who thinks that... that that is a great welcome gift. He said to me, Mr. Dewey, you could have chosen any hotel in Brisbane to stay at, and you've chosen the mantra. Thank you very much for doing that. We'd just like to say thank you uh, on behalf of the manager of the hotel. Uh, my wife, Gail, was in the bathroom at the time, so I, I ate all the strawberries. And when she got out, she said, who was that? I said, oh, the air conditioning guy, I don't know, as I wiped a bit of chocolate from my mouth. And, um, and I just, yeah, the, and at the end of the day, that is a classic example of wow factor marketing. And who thinks that whenever I'm traveling to Brisbane again, I'm going to stay at the Chocolate Strawberry Hotel? And who agrees that price has gone out the window? Completely out the window. Okay? Well, and who agrees that this hotel, with that sort of promotion, is really you know, a good marketer? No, they're not, because that's bullshit. They never happen. Okay? That never happened at all, because this hotel is run by morons. Okay? And pretty much most of the hotels around the world are run by people who are suffering from that awful disease called dickheaditis. Uh, because they don't do stuff like that. That will cost $2. I checked with my wife, I wouldn't know what a loaf of bread costs, but she said, yeah, that'd be $2. And even Max Brenner makes a good margin on that, doesn't he? 16 bucks or $17. That's all they have to do. That's all they have to do, but nobody does that. The guy that mows your lawn, all he has to do to actually stop you from ever picking out a letterbox leaflet from the box and finding some other lawn mower that does it cheaper, to stop you ever looking at that other leaflet, all he has to do is wash your car before he leaves but he'll never do that. All he has to do is get the squeegee and the bloody bucket of soap and clean your windows. So when he knocks on the door and says, I'm Mrs. Smith, I'm about to leave, um, but look, I just thought I'd let you know I washed your windows around the house. Do you think she's ever going to look for another lawnmower guy? She's going to say, I'll oh, build the lawnmower guy's best. 
because he washes my windows. And he also does the pool, he cleans the pool in a pair of little budgie smugglers. And, uh, and also his father to my children. So therefore, <laughs> um, she's never gonna find another lawn mowing guy. Who here in the room at the moment, let's just put it to the test, thinks that they have got a wow factor. They've got a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. In other words, something that takes people's eyes off the price. Be careful when you put your hand up because you know that I'm going to really work hard at, uh, yep, good, Scott, your game, what is it, mate? I have to get a microphone for you. You can just wait whenever you ask a question, if you can just wait for the microphone and Jody will give it to you. It, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, good. We have no sound. Do we have a sound person here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Scott, just yell out to us, mate. What is it? Yeah, we sell solar, uh, solar. solar systems on the roof. Yep. And um, when the customers have bought their system, had it all installed, we will say, look, give us a call in three to six months when the bills come through. Mm -hmm. We'll do a bill review, make sure that you're on track. With what you're nice doing. and loud, mate, nice and loud. Yeah, we'll do a bill review, make sure that you're nice on track with what you're doing as far as the savings are going. And uh, we'll also install monitoring software, which is fairly common, but we'll take you through how to read that monitoring software and get the best out of their system. Now that's great. What Scott's just explained to us here is an after sales Disney wow factor. Um, and that's great, don't get me wrong, but that's a bit like when the people, uh, the, the home builders, put a, uh, you know, a, a hamper of fruit and wine or whatever else on the coffee table when that first day you walk into your home. Uh, and that's lovely, but I'm more interested in uh, wow factors that are going to incentivize the purchase in the first place. And if you talked about that after sale service in the first place, it may not be uh, the free holiday to Fiji that would probably have more power, yeah. And we'll wait, do we have a microphone now or not? Yep, okay, so just over, we'll come to you in a sec, yeah. Um, hi, so we are a recruitment agency. Mm -hmm. um, and before our clients uh, engage with us, we actually offer free job descriptions and templates and do all of that upfront without getting any payment and even closing the door to them. Great, so therefore, when you are saying to uh, business, they let us recruit for you, you provide them with free? Job descriptions, interview templates, phone scripts, <coughs> you give them all that collateral that they would usually have in their HR team, and yep. all complimentary up front. And uh, in the recruitment game, is that an absolute Happy Meal toy? No one else is doing that? You're the only one's doing it? The yes, this time, you know, no other agency would sit there and write that job description. Great, well, well that's fabulous. Well, that's great. And who thinks that's good? Yeah, that's that's a good wow factor. And do you really get that out there uh, and boast about it like McDonald's do with the Happy Meal toy? We've got work to do with boasting about it. I yeah. guess it gets to see as people up front, like, hey, can we, can you like JD Q? Have you guys done it yet? We're happy to do that for you. So we can do that for you. Yep. But you can imagine, you can imagine a LinkedIn campaign or maybe Facebook uh, to a lookalike audience where you're probably wanting to deal with businesses that have got a certain number of employees because uh, they can afford your commission, but uh, you would probably say, you know, um, um, arguably the only recruitment company in the world that gives you this free service and then bang, 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 the free service. Uh, because what you're seeing here today is calamari outside the fish shop. What I'm doing is I'm sampling. I'm giving you a taste for what we can do for your business. And there'll be some of you that'll go, yeah, we'd like to hang around more. And some of you won't, that's fine. Um, but the fact is, is that, you know, most of you who will sit here today, if you leave and try and do this yourself, you're going to screw it up. You know that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you go to the gym, if you don't have a personal trainer, you're not going to get the muscles. This is the way it is. Um, so in your instance, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing here now. I would be marketing that because keep in mind what I said before, it's how you market what you do is a hundred times more important than what you actually do. Because if that's the world's best secret, then of course it's no use. So uh, yeah, I would be singing that from the, from, the, from the rooftop. And one more before we move on. Um, so we try not to give away things, um, but what we do is train off the experience of leave when they first come in. So mm -hmm. um, before they actually come in, uh, we give clients confidence that we know we can go into their situation before they even come in and take the steps. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a conversation that we have over the phone. To oh, by the way, can you tell everyone what you do? Uh, so I'm in financial services, so we do all sorts of retirees, all those aspiring to be full-time retirees. Um, they know that they come to our office, so we don't just say give their address and we'll see you there. We actually send them personalised instructions on how to get to the office. When they arrive to our office, they actually have a personalised car park sign. Mm -hmm. um, Great. So they know exactly, so if they come into our building, they know exactly where they belong from that point of view. Um, we make sure that they're the only client in our office when they first come and see us as well, so they get the 100% attention uh, 
Um, yeah, it's just trying to, I guess, kind of do this well, this and chocolate thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I, I like all of those things. And uh, uh, nonetheless, you've got to get that call in the first place. So whilst that is tremendous, almost concierge sort of service, once you get that call, uh, I think what you're probably here today uh, mainly for is how to get them to call in the first place so they can experience that. Yeah, but that's nonetheless a good wow factor. Okay, so therefore today's event's all about uh, avalanche leads and the uh, reason, uh, well, first of all, let me point this out, I'm not a seminar speaker. I was saying to people next door when we had a coffee earlier with a few people, um, the seminar game is uh, full of a lot of one-trick ponies, uh, a lot of people out there that are just good at something, whether it's website design or whether it's social media or whether it happens to be uh, public speaking or whatever it may be. Um, you'll find that when we go through this presentation, we're sort of like the Moscow Circus, all of that stuff is under the one tent. And the reason for that is I've surrounded myself with a Rolodex of suppliers who uh, uh, have to tick three boxes. Number one, they're really, really good. Number two, they're cheap. And number three, they're fast. And uh, what I know uh, is for small businesses, they want change in their business, they want it fast. They don't want it slower. Uh, and in terms of you know, most of the seminar speakers that are out there, uh, I'm not saying they're not good at what they do, but they're normally good at one thing. They're one trick ponies. And so what you'll find here is a package of uh, the whole lot. Uh, so if you're after graphic artists, we've got them, website designers. Yeah, we have a website team in the Philippines that will produce a six page website for you for 450 bucks. 450 bucks for a six page website. Is it as good as the ones that you'll get here in Australia? Maybe 70, 80% is good. I mean, you know, if you want to pay three or four, five, 10 grand here in Australia, fine. But you know, for people who've got a limited budget, that sort of stuff is very attractive to them. And they're designing it to my direct response design. So you'll see throughout this presentation, I'll show you why most of your websites are awful. I've seen them because remember when you filled in the registration, we're a bit different from most other people. We don't just ask for your name and email. We're not much interested in your email. Nobody opens them. We're interested in your phone number. Did you notice that uh, you got a few text messages to remind you to come to this event? Yeah, okay. When you're holding a free event, you'll get about a 30 to 40% turn up rate uh, if you annoy you with the text message. If you don't annoy you with the text messages, I'll be sitting here talking to one table. So the thing is, is that we're pretty up to speed with regards to this direct response stuff and the statistics that you get when you advertise on LinkedIn and Facebook and the statistics that you get when you send out mailers. If we want to get through the gatekeeper, uh, I mean, what we're going to do soon is stop doing these sort of events and just do boardroom dinners for businesses that are a certain size. Uh, because the thing is, is that uh, um, I would introduce you to Simon. Hey, Simon, can you wave your hands up? Yeah, Simon is down the back of the room. I'll introduce you to him at some stage, but. Uh, Simon's my implementation manager and I was saying to people next door when we were having a coffee beforehand is that the frustration for when you do this and anyone's in the advisory game whether you're a doctor or physiotherapist or dentist whatever it might be the frustration for anyone in the advisory game is when you give out really good information and they sit on their hands your clients sit on their hands that's just right, really frustrating and you imagine doctors when they say stop smoking stop smoking stop smoking but then they keep smoking it must be really frustrating and so what we're doing is that we're going to be holding more boutique events in a boardroom dinner sort of fashion and inviting businesses that we think will probably never sit on their hands, that they actually will do stuff. And Simon, as an implementation coach for me, actually comes with that package. We have a private coaching package, which is around about two and a half a month, so two and a half thousand dollars a month, and we take over all your marketing, okay? And what happens is that Simon has come on board uh, to make sure that you do stuff, because what was disappointing me was some people would come on board and they'd let me whack their cart every month, but they'd sit on their hands. Well, that's just false economy, it's crazy. So now we actually provide an almost done for your system. And to get through the gatekeeper for those size businesses, because normally when you're talking about those businesses, they're doing a million or more, uh, you've got to get past the, uh, the Jetstar Nazi uh, Gestapo member outside the boss's office, haven't you? Okay. And the reason I say Jetstar is because that's how they treat their customers. Um, you ever notice that when you go to Virgin, um, the you know, girl behind the counter is Miss World, everyone that works for them is Miss World, and they're friendly? When you get onto a Jetstar flight, the lady in the walking frame is the hostess. You know, it's like it's a completely different sort of thing. Uh, and they get stuff over at the check-in. You know, um, I think they just wait for you to be 30 seconds late so they can say you've just missed your plane. Right? Um, so to get through that gatekeeper, we go back to the old world and we send out something like that, which is called a video book. And it says, uh, send, spend some time with the marketing genius who delivered 139,000 leads uh, in uh, 24 hours for a client. And obviously, I'm milking the crap out of Seinfeld, as I always do. And when you open that, this happens. Hi, John Dewey is my name, and uh, I'm the owner of the Institute of Wow, uh, which is this business just behind anyway, me on the screen. Give me a second. I've got the wrong one. Give me a second. 
Can we have a microphone? <laughs> yes. I'll do it again. Yeah, okay. Right, so therefore, when they get this, they open it up, and they'll hear me saying this. Hi, John Bellow is my name, and uh, I'm the owner of the Institute Wow, uh, which is this business just behind me on the screen, and uh, we're a marketing advisory business, and we're holding uh, a boutique dinner uh, for you, uh, if you can come, uh, and uh, a dozen or so. Okay, so that's called a video book. Anybody used one of them before? I'm telling you, it is a breakthrough. It is a knockout. So we live in this online world where everything's got to be digital, and that's fine. Uh, we have another one here when we want to get through to butchers, we do the same thing. So this goes out to butchers and promotes a field discount program that we have. And so this guy gets on. I won't bother putting the microphone, but oh no, give me the microphone. If that one. This one here, this guy went from three to 4.2 million in one year because of the field discount program we gave him. He's a butcher who gives out field discounts now, and he's sitting outside Woolworths and he's smashing it. And this is what he's got to say. Okay, so you get the gist of that. If you want to get past the gatekeeper, you've got to have a wow factor. And uh, that stuff you would imagine, you know, is old fashioned these days because of Xbox and PlayStations and everything else. But I've got six Gen Y children, they're in their 20s, and a couple of them are still at home. And they saw one of these things sitting on the kitchen table. This was like 12 months ago, but they, and they opened it up, and it was sort of like, they were cavemen, they do this. I mean, these are kids that are on PlayStation and Xbox, so there should be nothing old-fashioned like this should you know, amaze them, but they're doing this, they're going. Like the fridge door with the light. And you, I, I said, what are you doing? They went, Dad, this is unreal. I said, yes, I guess so. So there's still a lot of room for offline marketing if you know uh, how to do it, if you know how to get that well figured. Who's in the B2B game that they think that something like that might work for them? Who's in the B2B? Yeah, well, there you go. So if you want to get past that Gestapo secretary, that might be the way. Okay, so these are not 10% and 20% increases. The stuff that you're going to see here today, so that you know I'm not a complete wanker, you will see the business owner saying to you, yes, we got a 300% increase. Yes, we got a 242% increase. Uh, I couldn't pay them enough Crown Lager to get them to say that. So these are real testimonials on real case studies that you can swipe and use. So what we'll cover today is this, Facebook avalanche lead generation, uh, turn your website into a 24-7 sales machine. I've looked at your websites because you've given that to us when you registered, and most of your websites are just awful, okay? I'm just being upfront. Uh, I'm telling you that you've got an ugly baby. Uh, and uh, the thing is, is that these days, your, your director of first impressions is no longer Susie behind the front reception desk. It is your website. Who goes to Susie before they go to website? No one. Never compete on price again and how to get your customers to stay forever. You can only get your customers to stay with you for a long time if you collect something that starts with D. And it's not dickheads. Data, yep. But nobody does it. You see, the thing is nobody but nobody but nobody collects data. Do you know, who thinks McDonald's is a pretty good marketer? I think we all would. I would sack their marketing manager within five minutes. They've got 1.7 million people today going through McDonald's and they don't know who they are. That is like, that's just amazing. But they're not the only ones, KFC. Um, let me see who else is suffering from dickheaditis. Um, every restaurant in Australia. You can go to any restaurant you like tonight in Australia and spend $200 and they'll let you leave. We've got a restaurant down in Melbourne called the Lobster Cave, the only restaurant in the world that's full 365 nights a year. Full, 100% every night. He was spending half a million dollars on, uh, on various advertising. We stopped that and we just gave the waitresses 50 cents for every name and contact detail they get. And all they do is they hand out, if you don't mind me just borrowing this suit for a second, they hand out a little entry form about that size. And it says, win a dinner for 10 of your friends at the end of the month. Give us your name, your email, and your main one is phone number. And they fill that in. Around about 90% of the guests fill it in. So for example, if Sue's paying the bill here, she would put an entry form in front of all of these people and she would just sit there like that. Why would she sit there like that? Because all they got to do is just fill in their name and their, you know, contact details. And she'll collect all five of them because she gets five times 50 cents. She's not going to let you out of that room. It's better to incentivize the staff to do that than to be wasting money in the Herald Sun newspaper. And then what happens, I've been there. If this was the restaurant, which is a 180 seat restaurant, the guy that owns this place, Bill Ferg, is sitting upstairs. He said, JD, let me show you how your text messages work. Because I put together 10 different text messages for him. This is a very expensive restaurant. You don't get the main meal for less than 50 bucks here, right? So there's BMWs and Mercedes all parked outside. And he yells out to Cheryl, his long-suffering secretary. Uh, he goes, Cheryl, I want to show JD 
how this whole thing works. So, uh, not that I didn't know I designed it for anything, I'd say. But she comes in with a tablet. He says, how many of our 180 seats have we got booked tonight? And she, this is like 2.30. And she said, oh, 72. He goes, well, we've got to fill another 100 seats. Well, you better get JD's text message number four out there. And she scrolls and my text message number four says, hi, Chef Pierre would like to surprise you with dinner for two tonight for just uh, for a lobster tail meal uh, for two for uh, $68. And she presses send and sends that out to just 500 of his 90,000 list that he's got now. And within 10 minutes, booked out, bang. She walks straight back in and says, restaurant booked out tonight, all 180 seats. And if she's only filled 150, what does she do? Just send out another few hundred text messages. That's how fast text messaging can work for you. And the crazy, crazy thing about it, you cannot do that. You cannot do this thing here. You can't get people to stay if you don't collect data. And when I looked at most of your websites, you don't have a data collection facility on your website. Okay, so you have to, on your homepage, have a data collection uh, facility. Now that could be, you know, download a free report, the three biggest mistakes that people make in property investment or three biggest mistakes people make in, uh, you know, financial management or self-managed super or whatever it may be. And if it's not that, it might be a free download of a video or free access to a video, or it might be the chance to win something. And I'll show you how that works, not just on your website, but also on social media advertising as well. Okie dokie. Um, a lot of people that come on board our coaching programs ask uh, like, how fast can this get going? And it can get going as fast as they move, okay? If they move with us, then we would move pretty fast. And that's why what we do with our private coaching program, which is the two and a half grand a month one, we actually, uh, we actually meet with uh, people either via Skype or Zoom or over the phone uh, after they fill in a questionnaire. So we learn all about their business before we have that call. And then within 10 working days, they get a really, and uh, we've got that lined up, haven't we, Gar? Uh, we, they get a 30 page marketing plan, which I'll show you in just a second. And that's uh, within 10 working days of their, uh, of their meeting with us. Uh, so I thought I'd also show you just how fast we work. This happens to be, uh, I wish we could turn the lights out here, but we can't. Um, can you? Okay, just up front. Uh, so therefore, this happens to be a candy shop uh, in Sydney and their big claim to fame is that they sell international candy. And uh, he's doing you know, quite a few million dollars turnover, so it's a successful business. And when you walk inside that shop, it is absolutely gorgeous inside. It's everything that you'd see in Disneyland inside, but the outside of it lets him down. Who thinks the outside of it, it you know, basically, yeah, it's close to a funeral parlor, not exactly a funeral parlor, but it's getting there. And so therefore he came on board and uh, within uh, a couple of weeks, uh, we had our call with him. We put the marketing plan together and I sketched up how the outside of his shop might look. And uh, the outside of his shop looked awful there. I don't know where this scary mascot came from. It looks a bit like Chucky. Uh, and it was still the daylights out of any child that was, you know, going to try and get money. This was in a mall, by the way. The outside of this shop here is one of those closed-off streets malls, and it's in Windsor in, uh, in New South Wales. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, I sketched up what it should look like, which is very Disney-style Toontown, and then I gave it to our artist. 48 hours later, it now looks like that. So let's just have a look at the transformation again from that to that. And because you didn't give me the reaction that I'm looking for, we're going to do that again and we'll stay in. You'll not be going to play lunch. Uh, I'm looking for an, uh, I don't know, so, ooh, something like that. Okay, let's go again. So it was that and it went to that. Wow. Ooh, there's some whales in there too. I won't take that, but that's fine. Okay, so therefore there's a before and after. And uh, guess what that's going to do to his trade? Um, we're talking about a business that's doing a few million turnover. His trade is already up within two weeks. Well, this is now a couple of months old. But in the first uh, two weeks, it was up 41%, 41%. Now, if you were doing a few million dollars turnover and then you analyze, annualize that 41% and that cost you eight grand, that cost him $8,000 to get that done. Do you think, oh, by the way, he got his $8,000 back by 10 o'clock the next morning, okay? This was put up at two in the morning by builders that work pretty fast. And he said to me, I've got the eight grand extra back in takings like by 10 o'clock the next morning. But if you're doing a few million turnover and you get a 41% increase just by doing that, then you, know, you do the numbers. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of what we bring to the table is just that big idea. You'll probably, who's at the moment got a thousand ideas, and don't be literal, but a whole bunch of ideas, and you've done a little bit of each one of them, and you're not sure which one is gonna bring home the baking, so that's why you've got 100,000 of them. What we tend to do is get involved and say, no, 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 no. And we have what we call the wheels on luggage call, um, because this came out of that first call. And the reason I say wheels on luggage call um, is that, guess what? We put man on the moon in 1969. It took us 20 more years, 1989, to put wheels on luggage. 
what were we smoking for 20 years? We're just dragging that luggage around. And it wasn't until two pilots had a phone call, and that's why I call this the wheels on luggage call, one guy from Continental said to the other guy from American Airlines, you know what, I'm sick of dragging the luggage around, so I'm gonna go home tonight and put in my garage, he was a handyman, wheels on the luggage. Well, of course, the rest is history. I mean, it took us 20 years after we put man on the moon to put freaking wheels on luggage. We only put the red and green lights in the Westfield car park three years ago. Remember, we used to chase the old lady around waiting for her to get in a car? Well, those days are gone. So therefore, the thing is, is that because you're in the business and you're probably not working on it, um, whether it's me or someone else, just get someone outside the business to have that wheels on luggage call with you and say, listen, that is shit. This is what it's got to look like. Because that there can mean millions and millions of dollars to him. And I'll tell you, the guy that owns this business, Darren, Jody's not here, otherwise I would have asked her. Um, Darren, his name is, great guy, best client you could ever have because he just does shit, okay? Um, he sent an email through yesterday and he just said, uh, JD, I know that because I'm a private client, I can access you at any time, but I just find, you know, one-on-one -on -one is so much more valuable to me. Um, before Christmas, can I just grab two hours with you anywhere you are in Australia? I'll fly to wherever you are in Australia and just for two hours. Well, of course, I'm going to say to him, well, I'll probably be in the wet Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> How about we both meet there? Because um, he realises that the value of that wheels on luggage call, that one-on-one -on -one call. And, uh, and so therefore, if you end up doing something with us, I think you should put some value against that call. I'll show you some other ones in a moment. Okay, that's what it looks like at night time. So you can imagine you can't really walk past it without going in. And that's the new one that we've just put up about two weeks ago at the entrance. He's got another story in Gosford at the entrance. So you can see the before and after there. Um, and the reason I'm saying that, by the way, is that these are stunning transformations. Like if you see some of the <coughs> website transformations that we have, you'll see that they're stunning. They're not 10% or 20%. And what you're after, uh, I would imagine, otherwise you wouldn't be here, is stuff that's going to be a stunning uh, upgrade or stunning renovation of what you've got at the moment. And the thing that you've got to really, really zero in on is your shit websites. Because I've looked at them and with a couple of exceptions, and I know you're sitting there going, well, that would be there. Uh, they're just awful, okay? So therefore, you are basically sending people to an ugly website. And the reason they're normally ugly is because you went to a bearded hipster to get your website done, okay? And they are evil. You do not want to go to a website designer to get your website done. And that sounds weird, doesn't it? Because you go to a doctor if you're sick, go to a car mechanic if you want the car fixed, but do never go to a website designer. My view is never go to a website designer because they're either going to have a man bun, a ponytail, or they're a bearded hipster. And they are going to take you to the cleaners most of the time, not knowingly, not knowingly, they don't know they're bad, but they're just bad. They might give you a pretty website, but it won't convert because it's full of information. Your website needs to be designed, particularly the homepage, on a direct response basis. So you need to have a benefit-driven headline or problem-solution headline. You need to have a positioning statement. You need to have video testimonials. You need to have a data capture facility. You have to have the three big benefits, not two, not four, but three, and so on and so forth. Okay, I'll go through that with you here today. But if you get your home page right, everything else look after itself. Because who thinks the most important page of the Warner's Day is the home, is the front page? Everyone agree, the front cover? Well, what do you think the most important page of your website is? The front cover, the home page. But you wouldn't know it. So therefore, you know, even though these days we live in the world of, you know, smartphones and tablets, so the rule of having all the good stuff above the fold, so if that was a computer screen, all the good stuff should be above the bottom of the computer screen, there's still 20%, maybe 30% in some instances of people watching or looking at your website on a computer. So you wanna make sure that all the good stuff is above the fold, above the bottom of the computer. Because if you're boring them shitless with that, they're not gonna go any further. And to actually give you a very clear indication of how much you're boring them shitless, who here at the moment knows their bounce rate of their homepage? Who knows their bounce rate? One person, okay? So the rest of you need to give yourself an uppercut. Because at the moment, you could be boring the shit out of everyone that comes to your website and you don't even know it. So the bounce rate of your website is the percentage of people that come to your homepage and go nowhere else. Because they've just bounced. So it'd be a bit like if I was uh, going into the delicatessen and I opened up the door like this and I went, oh shit, they're boring. And then I closed it. That's a bounce. Because I bounced before I went into the store. So that same philosophy stands for your website. If you've got a high bounce rate, and I suggest most of you do, it could be in the vicinity of 60, 70, 80%, then you've just wasted all your time and all your money on SEO, on bloody bad words, on whatever you're doing to bring people to a boring shit homepage and let them bounce. If seven out of 10 people are bouncing off your homepage, you're in deep trouble. No wonder you're not making the money that you should be making. And there's ways to arrest that and keep them sticky so that they'll go through your subpages.
Okay, so uh, this is why you're here. You're not after 10 or 20% increases, you're after big ones, and that's why we use the name Avalanche, and uh, you'll see that it's all about attracting, converting, and then keeping. So therefore, of course, attract, we can do that pretty easily for you, uh, if you get off your hands, okay? Uh, convert, uh, we can help you do that. Uh, the fact is, is that I'm not there at your te telephone answering, uh, you know, your telephonist or your secretary or you, but we can help you convert and then keep, we can help you definitely keep them in terms of stimulating repetitive trade if you just collect data. And keep in mind that if you've got a reasonably cold list, and that is, is that you're sending out an email to a reasonably cold list, uh, my members, if my coaching members that are in my program, will get a 90 plus percent open rate on all of our emails. But I've got a 21, 22,000 uh, database of people who've just downloaded stuff off my website or they might've come along to one of these, my open rate on those emails is more likely going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. Used to be 33, 34, 35, but not anymore. All right. Not that we bash them; it's just that everyone else has bashed them. So uh, you know, I, I suffer like everyone else. So therefore, why would you send out to a list an email? I'm not saying don't do it, but let's put things in perspective. Why would you send out an email that gets a 10 or 15 or 20 percent open rate when you can send out a text message that gets 94 percent open rate within three minutes? 94% within three minutes. Why would you even dream about using email ever again? So the main thing that you want to collect outside their name and the URL is to collect their phone number because that should be the way. We haven't spammed enough people on SMS yet for them not to answer our SMSs, all right? That'll happen, okay? We've abused email because it was free. And people sit there and say, oh, well, the SMS will cost me five cents. Oh, please get over it. Look, if that worries you, go and get a job. Close your business down. It's like the people say to me, oh, that face page doesn't work. No, it's Facebook. Oh, well, whatever it's called, it doesn't work. Oh, okay, well, how much are you spending? Oh, well, first of all, what's your creative, which was like woeful vomit stuff. Uh, and secondly, how much are you spending? Oh, $15 a day. I spend more than that on coffee. You can't spend $15 a day on Facebook and think it's going to work for you. Um, you've got to have a daily budget of $50 to $100 just to see whether or not Facebook is real, okay? You can't put $10 or $15 a day against Facebook and then say it doesn't work. Okay, so these are the sorts of businesses that used to pay me quite uh, a few dollars. Um, and this is the cred build component of my presentation, I guess. You'll see there that those guys aren't silly. And uh, these guys were always after me giving them ideas that would simulate avalanche, okay? They had their advertising agencies that would build their brand for them. Um, in other words, waste money on the Brisbane Broncos jumper or maybe the side of buses or the backs of taxis or maybe sponsoring the Olympics, all that bullshit that doesn't work. Uh, and then they would get me to fix all that bullshit by getting avalanche leads by sales promotions, all right? And if you think that uh, I'm being a bit harsh, let me ask you this. Who here has ever bought anything off the electronic signage around the fence of the football games that you watch every weekend? Anybody bought anything off that? I've never met a human that's ever bought anything. But there will be millions of dollars in every sporting code this weekend wasted on those electronic fence signs. Who here has ever bought anything off the side of a bus? Nobody. I've never met a human. Back of a taxi, uh, outside billboard, except McDonald's four minutes ahead on the freeway, that makes sense. But I've never seen anyone buy a hair shampoo doing 110 and going, oh, I think I'll back back. I think I'll get that. There's so much money wasted out there. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Because the under 30 so-called social media experts will tell you, oh, it's all about, JD, it's all about getting a name out there. It, well, McDonald's can piss it up against the wall. It doesn't matter. They'll still survive. So they can actually put their logo on the World Cup electronic fence of the football games. It'll never sell another hamburger, but they can do that and just justify that, oh, we're getting our name out there. We fall into a small business category. We, we don't want to get that, and that, well, we don't have the money to get our name out there. We'd love to, but we just don't have the budget. So my view is, you'll find it's pretty um, opposite to a lot of advertising agencies. My view is that for us, it's not a matter of getting our name out there. It's a matter of getting their name in here. That's what direct response marketing is all about, getting their name in here cost effectively so that you can then convert, and not many people do it. These are the things I used to do for the newspapers, um, uh, bingo games and all that sort of stuff. And when I was doing that for the newspapers for quite some time, I decided to actually uh, do one myself, but I needed uh, a naming rights person, so therefore I went to TV Week and New ID, and I said, how about I give you a couple million of these scratch cards, and you hand them out, and then I'll take the phone revenue. You get the benefit of saying, get the new idea this week and get a free bingo ticket, and you can win $50,000. I'll take the 18 cents per phone call. And they said, yeah, sure. So what happened is that uh, you had to ring up on Monday to actually get six numbers to scratch out and then you'd scratch these numbers out, okay, in game one. And then midnight on Monday night, it would flip over to Tuesday's numbers and then you'd get Tuesday's numbers on the phone and scratch them out. 
So when you ring up and they say, thank you for ringing Call for Cash, your numbers today are 7, 14, 20, just like a bingo call, right? And we made sure that everyone in Australia had two of the three numbers they needed to win a big prize by the Wednesday. Do you think they rang on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Of course we teased them. And this was the result of that. We got 812,000 phone calls in a week. And uh, at 18 cents a call over four weeks, you know, we picked up quite a bit of revenue out of that. And uh, I thought that this was the retirement package because I remember saying to my wife at the time after we did this twice and made a million dollars, uh, Fiji, and she said, well, you've been working hard, you know, uh, it'd be nice for a holiday. I said, forget the holiday, buy the island. Um, and as it turned out, God was watching uh, and I thought my head was too big. So guess what? Uh, when you were running these things back in those days, you needed a permit number. And that permit number came from the lottery department and the lottery department thought that I was Lucifer because I was affecting their state scratch lotteries. That's what they thought anyway. And so they brought a rule in that they couldn't play bingo over the phone. So that's the retirement package that went south and that's why I'm speaking to you here today. <laughs> Otherwise I would have bought bloody Fiji. Uh, this is another one uh, which we talk about avalanche marketing. The reason I'm showing you this is this is all the stuff I used to do in the offline world. I'm going to show you how it applies to you now in the online world. Because back in these days, I had to build relationships with newspapers and TV stations and radio. So now you don't have to do that. I'm taking this mentality, which is avalanche marketing, and now putting it into Facebook and giving it to you. That's how it works, all right? And you won't find that from someone who's under 30 because they've never done any of this shit. They're the ones that tell you to take a picture of all the real estate agents outside your real estate office and post it up to Facebook. I don't know, what that, I, I don't know why. Um, okay, so therefore this one was the football cards and we took it uh, to different levels when we took it over because I went into the Sunday papers here in Brisbane and in Sydney and said I'm going to give you two million Mal Meninga and Andrew Andy House and Cars to drop out of the paper next Sunday and they say why are you doing this? And I said well because I'm Mother Teresa's cousin, I'm here to help Rupert Murdoch make more money because he doesn't have enough money and so therefore if they didn't find Elvis that week, guess who was on the front page of the paper? Me. And all the banners outside the news agencies were me. You'll see here, for every reader, for every reader. And the big difference that that made to the football cards was that in one year, we took that from $2 million to $12 million. The football cards as one of the licenses for rugby league used to come at around about 20 out of maybe 60. So there was caps and T-shirts and all that sort of stuff that came well in advance of uh, football cards. But because of what we did with our sampling, it went from 2 to $12 million. Because what do you think happened when mainly boys would get the two football cards out of the paper and they get the first two football cards, Andrew Eddinghausen and Mal Meninga. What do you think they screamed to mum? I want to get to the news agency to pay $2 for the rest of the, th and then they're hooked into the drug habit, uh, you know, the collector card habit, okay? Now, this is probably uh, the final one before I move into showing you how you can do this online. Uh, Greater Building Society, anybody heard of them here? Anybody heard of the Greater? Yeah. Okay, one or two, okay. So uh, they're on the Gold Coast, but they're not here. Uh, they're a regional bank right throughout uh, New South Wales and, uh, and the Gold Coast. And basically, uh, when I got involved with them, I saw that they were doing what everyone else was doing, and it's possibly what you, it's happening in your industry, and that is they were selling on price. Let's do that again, just so at least I'm sort of confident there's some form of life in the room. Uh, they were selling on price. price. Good, okay. So you can do it. You can look interested if you really try hard, okay? And I don't care whether you laugh at the dad jokes, they're just going to keep coming, all right? So therefore... Don't think if you sit there and just, oh, if we don't laugh at them, that'll not encourage him. You'll still get it. Okay, so therefore, um, what I said to these guys was that, listen, you are doing exactly the same as everyone else. And whilst they're not a small business, they're small compared to the big banks. And I said, if you actually come out with a home loan rate of 6.2% or whatever it was at the time, what do you think the big four banks would do? 6.1. And then the greater would go 6% and the big banks would go 5.9. Who do you think is going to win, the big guy or the little guy in the price war? The big guy. If you were a hardware store, do you think you're going to beat Bunnings? Not a chance. You better give away a free shovel with that wheelbarrow because if you don't, then they will beat you on the wheelbarrow price every time. But if you give a value add, a Happy Meal toy, like a free shovel with that wheelbarrow, they'll have 64 committee meetings before they even decide to vote on it. So you will beat them every time. I can easily beat any of the big guys. I can show you how to easily beat them because you are a challenger brand and they're big, fat and lazy. And this is a classic case of it. This particular building society was a minion compared to the big four banks, but we stole so much of their market, you would not believe it because we were nimble, we were fast. And this is how we did it. We came up with a Happy Meal toy value add offer and uh, we paid for it via the honeymoon rate. So up until when I came along, their big acquisition tool was a 1% honeymoon rate, which every bank had, so it wasn't a wow factor. 
So if you borrowed five hundred thousand uh, dollars, the one percent honeymoon rate on that would give you, you know, five thousand dollar discount in that first year. We just took that five thousand dollars and gave it to a wholesale travel company, and they'd give us a ten thousand dollar holiday for that. So to swap the one percent honeymoon rate for a free holiday was cost neutral; didn't cost them any more money. And this is what we did: we just said uh, swap your home loan. Why do you think we said swap your home loan, not get a home loan? Anybody want to have a shot at that? Tony's right, okay, so uh, this morning, the statistics are that less than 4% of Australians woke up thinking about your product or service. I don't care what you make, a wheelbarrow, a bedspread, uh, a, a home, whatever it is, a motor car, less than 4% of people in Australia woke up thinking about what you do. But in this instance, we knew that 40 something percent of people actually hated their bank. They didn't like their bank because the bank were charging them fees and charge all this sort of stuff, okay? So therefore, to broaden the audience, or what I call widen the funnel, uh, I suggested that we go with swap your loan, or get one, but swap your loan was a big headline because there was 40-something percent of people unhappy with their banks. Do you think that's a bigger market to go for than get a loan, 4%? Of course it is. And think about that. My, my mantra is look for your most profitable customer, identify them, and look for more people who look like them. But also, at the same time, what you need to be doing is thinking about widening that funnel, okay? Um, anybody sort of sitting there at the moment and go, geez, he talks fast? Oh, good, okay. Or well, you're sitting there saying, I think he talks slow, I think he's had a stroke. Okay, in other words, basically, you don't think anything. <laughs> okay, you don't give a shit. Uh, okay, the reason I'm, I am running through this quickly, tell me if I am going too fast, is because I want to give you a whole bunch of value. Okay, so even if you leave today and you do nothing with us, you're going to get on Facebook and say that's the best you know, seminar I've been to which many others have, by the way. Just want to point that out to you. Hint, hint. Okay. Right, so this is what the uh, program was all about, and this is one of the ads. Have a look at this TV ad, and it played on Facebook as well, and see if you can find a price. We're off going on a beach all holiday. We stayed at the Brits um, on Port Beach, and as I said, it was this wonderful week. Open the door, and there it was, right over the beach, and right over the city lights, and... We couldn't believe our eyes, Get a home loan from the Greater Building Society and choose yourself a free holiday. No catches, no competitions. Call the Greater on 13 13 86 for Anybody see a price there? That would melt the switchboards, okay? That would melt the switchboards. Can you imagine if you were one of the 40-something percent that just had a bad experience with your bank in the month or two beforehand, would that be appealing? Bloody oath it would, okay, where they treat you like a number, where we treat you like a person, and we give you free holiday to Fiji. And this one here just brained them. This was a couple. What would happen is I'd go out with the camera crew into people's homes, and I would, you know, basically feed them the sort of stuff that we're looking for. I'd ask them questions. We would shoot the daylights out of it and then pick up the good stuff. This particular husband and wife, uh, Colin and Elaine, um, the husband normally didn't speak, okay? Normally the wife looked after a lot of their finances, and the husband was just there. In this instance, he had quite a few Harley Davidsons outside his house, uh, uh, so therefore I decided not to ask him too many questions because if, if I was intrusive, there's every chance he could kill me. I don't know. Uh, so therefore, uh, Elaine spoke, and uh, they were lovely people. I'm joking, but they're lovely people. And have a look at this ad. This was the winner of all winners. What believe you're paying for the credit? I went and put money into the bank, and they charged me for every transaction. They charged me if I use internet banking. They charged me if I use phone banking. They charged me if I use an ATM. They charged me more if I line up for 20 minutes and hand money over the counter. It's a wonder they don't charge me to walk past the bank. Swap your home loan to the greater and forget about all these fees. Swap now, save on fees, and get a free holiday. Call 13 13 86. Again, did you see any pricing? No. So you don't have to market on price. Um, and when we played any of those sorts of ads, we did lots and lots of them. Uh, that, was, that was the winner of all winners, that one. But they just melted the switchboard the next day, okay? It's selling on emotion because you know, real estate agents will tell you that you know, people buy real estate on emotion. They buy everything on emotion. They buy Franklin water. They buy Cadbury chocolate. They buy Crunchy Bar. Everybody buys everything on emotion. And logic comes second, okay? Then after a few years of doing this, and it just skyrocketed their home loan business, uh, they wanted to get to a white collar audience because building societies traditionally get to a working class audience. They're gonna be truck drivers, electricians and plumbers. They said to me, how do we get to a white collar audience? And I said, well, you know, you're gonna to have to either do it the slow way uh, or the fast way. Uh, do you want mild or wild? And fortunately they chose wild because I don't do mild. Um, and I rang a mate of mine who was doing Billy Connolly at the time for ING and said, how did you do that? 
And he said to me, we just get Billy Connolly twice a year anywhere he is in the world, take a camera crew to him and we just knock it over. So it took me a while to get this guy, but eventually got him across the line. And uh, yeah, so we got Seinfeld to be spokesman. And this is the result of it. You'll see here when you put wow factor on top of wow factor, just what happens. We flew over to New York a few times throughout the three years that we did this. And we found a little empty shop uh, that was a delicatessen that had gone broke uh, within uh, 48 miles away from where Jerry lives. And the reason it was 48 miles is that if you, he had to travel more than 50 miles away from home, you had to give him a Learjet because he can't fly on a commercial flight. He's bigger than the Pope. So therefore, you have to give him a Learjet wherever he goes. So that was a 50 mile limit. We found a little town about 48 miles away with an empty shop. <laughs> so therefore, this is what we did. I'd like to talk to you about a home loan. Not for me, for you. I have a home loan. Well, get a getaway home loan from the Greater. It could be the most fun financial decision you'll ever make. Just ask the Greater customer. When we shopped around for a home loan, we found the Greater had one of the lowest interest rates. And a free holiday with over 200 choices, and there were no catches. Get a getaway home loan and go on a free holiday. Or loan us some money and we'll go on a holiday. Either way, someone's getting out of here. So who thinks that's a bit different from most other home loan commercials, okay? And that's what you've got to do. That was a weird inflection, wasn't it? I'll do that again. And that's what you've got to do. It sort of sounded like I really cared then, didn't it? Yeah. I'll do that again. And that's what you've got to really do. Um, I'm starting to sound like a seminar speaker. Um, okay, well, if I was a seminar speaker, you know what we'd be doing at this very moment? We would be breaking for you to actually look at the person next to you and give them a shoulder massage. And that ain't going to happen. All right. And uh, also the conga lines. I'm not into that. Whenever I go to an Anthony Robbins thing, I'm scared shitless that I'm going to have the biggest man in the world next to me that's going to do the big hug thing, you know. Actually, Gail, my wife, got pissed off because I took her to an Anthony Robbins thing. I've been to a hundred of them um, a few years back there down in Sydney. And uh, I knew when the hugging was coming up and I pretended to take a phone call. I said to her, I've got to go. She had the biggest man in the world sitting next to her. And uh, I went outside, come back in, and she had no colour in her face because the guy just squeezed the daylights out of her. Um, but from a personal development point of view, Gail felt much better about herself. Um, <laughs> She hated me, but felt much better about herself, and that lasted for maybe an hour, you know. Uh, okay, so therefore, uh, what happened with this guy when we brought him on board? Uh, they tripled their home loan market share uh, in the first 24 months of Seinfeld doing it. There's many, many more ads for Seinfeld. I won't go into that. I'm just showing you this because what you need to do is to look at whatever you're doing in your industry and become, where is the whiteboard? Okay, this is that, this is that pivotal moment where I really look like I know what I'm doing. Okay, you need to be this. You need to be the un of your industry. And uh, that uh, can be either unusual, unconventional, whatever. But you need to take a leaf out of Richard Branson's book. Because the thing is, his planes are no different from everyone else's planes. It's the same damn planes. But guess what? Everything that he does is different. I mean, he's got Miss World as a hostess all the time. He's got bikini girls on the nose of every plane. I don't know how he gets away with that in 2018. You can't look at a girl without getting sued now. Um, but he does everything unconventionally and that's what you want to do you want to be unusual unconventional you want to be the unbutcher the unaccountant the undoctor and that's what we did at the greater we were the unfinancial institution everything we did was based on logic don't get me wrong we just didn't pull things out of our backside and just do them because that was a good idea we ran everything but even the seinfeld ads in seinfeld's instance he did a few didgeridoo jokes and a few koalas and all that sort of stuff and i said to him jerry look that's not going to work uh, Don Lane got away with that back in the old days, but it's not going to work today. And he goes, who's Don Lane? I went, of course, you're Seinfeld. Uh, but anyway, the thing was, is that, guess what? We ran that through research and they said, look, we love Jerry, but we don't like him making fun of koalas or didgeridoo. So did you think those ads ever hit the TV screen? No. And every ad that we put out, we ran tests on. So when they hit the TV screen, we knew they were going to work before we put them on. Pretty easy in the online world these days. You can throw out a thousand people. This is what I'm thinking of doing. And you'll know whether that's going to work before you put bloody money behind it. But nobody does that. Everyone just licks their finger and just pisses money up against the wall. Why Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, good question. What was the pitch to Jerry and why Jerry? Um, the reason why Jerry is because... Yep. No, I'll tell you that too. Um, uh, so uh, the reason I suggested, we, we, I, I got Robin Williams to start with, okay? So I flew over to New York and uh, we, we put out a, sur a, a, a survey to members and non-members of the Greater Building Society. And you already saw before Seinfeld, I'd created a cheeky Virgin-esque brand for them, knocking the banks and having a bit of fun with it and saying you should swap to the Greater and get a free holiday. So it was a pretty cheeky uh, sort of unconventional uh, form of banking. And we said to, you know, the 5,000 people we put the survey out to, who would you think as a celebrity 
uh, keep in mind, I asked the building society, did they want mild or wild? And they went for wild, thank goodness. So I said, well, the best way to get market share quickly is to use an endorsement. And uh, I used the, you know, the, the uh, Billy Connolly one as an example. And they said, yep, knock yourself out. So uh, I got in contact with Robin Williams and he said yes. So I went over to New York, met with him, and we signed off on it. And uh, I rang the building society, I'll never forget it, from New York saying, listen, you ought to build a statue outside your building. And I said, what, of Robin Williams? I said, no, me, you idiot. I got Robin Williams. You know, um, uh, I got off the plane in Sydney and Robin Williams' agent rang and said, look, sorry, he's just got a movie, he can't do it. Wow, damn it. So I had to start again. So it took us about another two or three months to get this guy. He's harder to get to than the Pope. But when we did get to him, I flew over and met with him. I uh, got on really well with his manager, a guy called George Shapiro, who's in his 70s, and he was the one that found Seinfeld. And uh, Seinfeld got 1.1 a year, okay? So multiply that by three, that's 3.3 million over three years he got. And for his 1.1, he worked two days. I'd fly over there and we'd just do the shoot in two days. And, you know, I'd fly over beforehand and do everything with him. But the actual work that he had to do was two days. Um, but you think that's a lot of money. Guess what? Ricky Ponting gets more than that from Synovus Vitamins. Jennifer Hawkins gets more than that from Maya. So we got the, one of the biggest stars in the world for less than what these people are getting here in Australia. So it was a pretty big curve, I do say so myself. And uh, we, I said to Jerry in one of the meetings, you know, oh, by the way, we picked Seinfeld is because the vote came back and said that, you know, we think the personalities that suit the greater, and these were members and non-members, were the likes of Robin Williams, Jim, uh, uh, Seinfeld came second, Jim Carrey came third, and then it went, I was hoping for Rove. That would have been easier, <laughs> So I dug my bloody grave, I had to sort of do something, I'd pull this off once I've got the survey. And why did we then go for Seinfeld? The secondary reason is, is that we didn't want any first home buyers, okay? Just the same reason I don't want any students in this room. I don't want any uni students in here, I'm not gonna make any money out of them. They're just gonna take up oxygen in a bloody seat. Um, so therefore, what I'm here is real business owners. Uh, I don't even want BDMs. I don't want business development. I want owners, and I'm not going to embarrass you by putting your hand up in case you are a BDM, but the thing, I only want owners and CEOs in this room. I can't sell anything to the sales rep. I don't want uni students in the room. So from a message to market match, what I had to convince these guys, you don't want first home buyers. And the reason you don't want first home buyers is because, anyone want to take a stab at it? They only borrow 250 grand, 300 grand. We don't want them. I want second home buyers who are going to get their second or third or fourth home. They're going to borrow half a million to a million. They're the customers I want because for every one of them, I'd have to get two or three first home buyers. And then the building society clicked. They went, wow. Now, this is the same building society before I came along. The advertising agency was getting them to promote home loans in the middle of Neighbours TV show. That's how dumb they were. That's how silly they were. They were putting home loan ads on in Home and Away, maybe because of the word home. I'm not sure. Uh, like, how many 17-year-olds have you seen go, could I have a home loan? Uh, they were doing nuts, nuts thing. They were sponsoring the Newcastle Knights and all this crazy shit that I just stopped overnight. So that's why we chose Seinfeld because he appeals predominantly to over 40s and over 40s more than likely are going to be second and third home buyers. Message to market match. If we were after first home buyers, I would have got Guy Sebastian, okay? So anyway, when we did it, I said to him over a coffee one day, why did you do this? Because you got more money than God. And uh, he didn't even know what he was getting. He just did it because, I mean, his management did, of course, but he just did it, he thought it was a good idea. He said, you know, basically no one from Australia has ever asked me before. So I said, yes. And you wanted me to take the piss out of banks. I take the piss for a living. So he was really down to earth. And he really enjoyed my jokes too because I, I gave him a lot of jokes. I said to him, does that happen? He said, you've got no idea. I'll get in a taxi, sometimes in some other you know, country, England or somewhere like that. And he said, they will just have to spin out all these jokes. And he said, they'll spin out episodes of Seinfeld that even he can't remember and he wrote the damn thing, you know. Okay, so therefore, when we did this, I used to go into uh, their homes, as I said, with a camera crew, and uh, I would, uh, at the end of it, take the piss out of the husband and wife by saying, look, I'd like to say you're the best we've ever had. And they go, oh, thank you, because I've been Dr. Evil up until then. And they go, oh, well, thank you. I go, no, no, I'd like to say that. I can't. You're awful. Um, let me know if you think this is bad humour or good humour. I am. I'd just like to say this was the best performance from anyone that we've ever had in one of these two theaters. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, no, you misunderstand that. I said, I'd like to say that I can't be with you. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? Uh, yeah. We might have to do it all again. Um, now, I always thought it was funny, but the camera crew thought that I was uh, evil, Dr. Evil. Uh, they just thought it was bad. So when we did the Seinfeld thing, they got me back. So, you know, I just want to say that, you know, you are the most professional, uh, most confident, just best to work with marketing person I ever worked with. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. I'd like. <laughs>
I guess it's called payback. Okay, uh, now back to the Avalanche Leads thing. I'm about to go into the online way of how you can do this. And uh, I, what I don't want you to do, please, at the end of this, um, today, there will be a few people who want to hang around and talk to us. Uh, I will stab you through the eye with a pencil if you come up to me and say, JD, I thought that was really engaging and a lot of good ideas there, but my business is different. That's bullshit. We have a funeral parlor in Washington on this program. So therefore, your business is not different. And that's a bit weird. I was doing one of these things in Santa Monica and a big uh, black, you know, black African-American guy comes up to me and says, look, I came from Washington to see this. Oh, wow, you come to LA for this. How do you even know about it? We only advertised on Facebook in LA. He said, oh, my cousin told me. He said, I'm going to put you to the test. I've got a funeral parlor. I went, wow, okay. He said, uh, will this work for me? I said, yeah, of course it will. And I said, have you been to Australia? He said, oh, look, I love your sense of humor and I've been to Australia many times. And uh, you know, I said, well, you would know that when you go into a supermarket in Australia, we've got a flybys program. Because everywhere I went, uh, they asked me, did I have a flybys card? I said, well, that's a loyalty program. He goes, oh, okay. I said, well, for you, we'll set up a diebys program. Um, and he went, what? Now, this guy's huge, about twice the size of Mal Meninga, so I had to be careful with my sarcasm. He goes, a day-based program. Yeah, so what will happen is that every time someone you know, refers a relative to you to burn, uh, then basically they get a point, and they save up those points to get headstones. And he looked down at me like, he goes, are you taking the piss? I said, yes, of course I am. We're not doing a day-based program. But anyway, the point is that these are all the sorts of industries, uh, and I could put that another 10 slides up. Please do not come up and say my business is different. We've got A to Z, or maybe we haven't got a zoo, but pretty much everything in between. So please don't think that, oh, my business is different. Okay, so therefore the answer to this is yes. So I'm not going to do the normal seminar thing and get you to put your hand up. But what you want is a predictive marketing model. You want something that turns the tap on. So in our instance, when we want to fill one of these rooms, we go out for a lookalike audience. Who's familiar with lookalike audiences on Facebook? Who's familiar with that? Can you put your hand up high just so I know how many? Okay. So I say to Facebook, Here's uh, two or three or 400 email addresses of the people that we would like to have in this room. And uh, then they actually check out the traits of those people uh, on their Facebook page, and then they look for more people who look like them. So it's the most laser targeted form of marketing the world has ever seen, and you've got to use it, okay? It's called lookalike uh, audiences. And so therefore that it goes out, I put my ads together, and then we will get 100 registrations for something like this, uh, I'm paying something like about uh, 30 to 45 dollars per registration uh, and then um, we will get around about 30 or 40 percent of those people in the room. So that means registration wise it might be 30 or 40 dollars but because I only get 30 to 40 percent in the room that 40 dollars turns into 120 dollars but that's all right because you know I'm selling two and a half thousand dollar monthly coaching program so therefore my break even point is reasonable. And that's the way you've got to do it. And, and I'll get Simon to talk to us a little bit later, my implementation coach, because he's, um, he looks after a lot of this for us. But the Facebook thing is, uh, is dynamo, dynamo or dynamite if you can reverse engineer it like we do. Okay? Not many people do that. They just throw 50 bucks a day at it and they don't know what the actual uh, dashboard is, is telling them. Okay, so um, this is, oh, by the way, and the reason I bring that back, a predictable model. I know that if I spend X dollars on uh, Facebook, it'll get me, let's say, 100 registrations and I'll get 35 to 40 people in the room like this. And then I will say, well, my conversion rate on selling my coaching programs normally is, bloom, whatever that percentage is. So therefore, I've got an ROI already in my head. So the thing is, is that that's what you want. You want a predictive model. You know how like uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney often used to say, uh, let's write ourselves a swimming pool? Ever heard that? They, when they interview the city, let's just write ourselves a song which will buy us a swimming pool. And really, that's what you want. You want a predictive marketing model. I was talking to someone this morning, uh, and uh, beforehand, I was saying, look, we've got uh, a marketing system which relies heavily on media exposure, radio ads, and newspaper interviews, and all this sort of stuff. But you never know. If they find Elvis, then that's going to be really hard to get someone wanting to interview you. And so, therefore, what I'm saying is that you want it's great to be continuing to do that but you also want a predictive marketing model that you can switch on and get good leads whenever you want. And it's one thing to get leads, it's another thing to get good leads. And I said, you know, some idiot, a, a troll again, when my ad that probably you saw to get you here, 812,000 leads in one week, you want to find out how he does that. And some idiot put down, uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter how many leads they are, they've got to, they're only good if they're warm. Oh, genius. Well, you can probably spell IQ as well, you know. Like, of course you want them to be warm, but we all have to put up with a certain amount of collateral damage. And do you think that 
uh, if I got 812,000 phone calls from people who bought the New Idea magazine, do you think that they would be New Idea readers? I think so. And do you think when they got that list, they could sell other magazines within the Pacific Magazine Group? Yes. So they were shit hot, not warm, they were shit hot leads. So we're all about helping you get warm to hot leads. But you have to expect that there's going to be some collateral damage. Uh, I look around the room here today, I don't think there is any, but sometimes parents or grandparents tell their children or grandchildren about my thing, and I've got a table full of uni students. And I've got to pretend that I like them, and I really want to stab them through the eye with a pencil. Okay, because they're just taking up oxygen for someone that might buy some stuff off me. By the way, I'm, I'm evil. I just thought I'd mention that to you. Yeah. Okay. So it's all about creating quick noise to the right audience, and uh, this is the system. Uh, I was looking for the marketing plan, Gail, but anyway, I'm not sure where it is. Uh, okay, so therefore, I'll show you that when uh, you're putting together a system, uh, some people normally put together a small system. I can't help myself. I've got to put together a, a large system. And so therefore, this is called the WOW Manifesto system. No, just now, leave it where it is, yeah. Um, no, that's all right. Uh, so therefore, this here has 12 sections to it. 12 sections to this system. And, uh, oh, by the way, let me just do that again because I'm disappointed. Uh, no, no, I'm not dis I'm very disappointed in you. Um, because when I pick up this book, what I'm looking for is what we did before you. So let's do that again, okay? Blah, 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 back, okay. And when we uh, actually put together a system, I put together a big system. <laughs> that's, that's like a porno movie. That's weird. Ooh, it's not that, it's not, yeah. Okay, so therefore, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so that's the system. I've done all that again. I'm not going to do that again. Okay, let me just go through it. And uh, again, uh, I'm only going to do this, of course, if uh, I'm, I'm giving, I don't know whether you noticed, in between the sarcasm and the jibes and the threats to stab you through the eye with a pencil, there is a lot of love coming from me. And I'm not feeling a lot of love back. And so therefore, I just ask you to wake up yourselves. Uh, who here, and probably the answer to this would be, shit, yeah, JD. Um, would you like me to show you the 12 point system? We got a hell yeah, we got, a, we got everything but shit, okay. Right now, so therefore there's 12 components to this, uh, as you see here, 12, okay, 12. And uh, this is what you need to put into a marketing plan. Oh, let's do that. Seeing that you have been very unkind to me so far, let me just ask you, in the spirit of love uh, and affinity, um, oh, look, just, I think we should hold hands. <laughs> um, uh, in the spirit of love and, and just you know, having respect for you, let me ask you this. Who, after you've just told me at the very beginning of the day that marketing and sales is the most important thing in your business, who here has a 12-month marketing plan put together for their business? And God is watching and God is a Catholic, so he will strike you down dead if you lie, all right? So therefore, who has a marketing plan? One, two, that's it. I don't know what we're going to do with you people. I seriously do not know. Um, so therefore, you can understand how nuts that is. You're in a cave without a torch. And don't feel too bad because, you know, 95% of businesses are exactly the same. They're just, you know, whenever the sales are down, they drop their pants and basically give stuff away for half price. They do whatever they have to do. And they're sitting with the husband or wife at the kitchen table at night time making shit up, you know. Well, let's do this face page thing. Oh, it's Facebook, sweetheart. Well, whatever it is, let's do it. So therefore, what you can have a look at here is what you should have in your marketing plan. You don't need all of these 12 points, but you need at least a good portion of them, okay? So number one, the who, why, and where. This is all about identifying your most profitable customer and then looking for more people who look like him. Simple as that. Just identify your most profitable customer and then look for more people who look like him. Really, really simple. Number two, uh, be the expert. The only reason you're here is because I market myself as the number one marketing guy in the country. If I said uh, in all of my advertising, I was the number 25 marketing guy, best marketing, you'd be looking for the other 24 before you came, okay? Uh, no, I don't care whether you think I'm a show off. I know I am. If I met another me, I'd employ him so that I didn't have to work so hard. But there's not many people out there that can do all the stuff that I can do. So I have no qualms in showing off and saying I'm the Gordon Ramsay of this industry. So if you are, then you should tell people about it. Or if you think you're one of, you should tell people about it. Okay, we'll take questions afterwards because if I answer questions throughout, it'll, it'll screw up everything. Okay, number three, uh, how to create a wow factor, and that's the easiest way to take their eyes off the price. The best example of that is McDonald's. I've got six Gen Y kids now, but we had 612 at one stage, and uh, McDonald's uh, with the Happy Meals got $4.8 billion out of us throughout that period to shut those little rascals up in the back of the Trago. And do you think I could tell you what a Happy Meal cost? Not a chance. And nor could you or, you know, you just don't know because you bought it for the free. Oh, dear. 
I think it might be because you were writing then and I disrupted that. I think that's what it does. Let's go. You bought the Happy Meal for the free? Toy. Toy. Terrific. Okay. Uh, number four, get emotional. As I said before, people buy a crunchy bar on emotion, not just real estate. So the whole idea is, is that you need to give them their problem and then you provide them with your solution. That's called problem solution marketing. Jenny Craig knows what that's all about. You see, you don't want to go through features. I don't care what's under the bonnet of that Mercedes. I don't care how many horsepower. I just want to know the benefits. That that is a chick magnet. That's going to pick up hot chicks. Okay. Um, I was a guy. My wife. I was just saying. Look, other people would probably want the car like that. I don't. I'm in love with you, and always have been. And uh, oh no, we might as well come out with it. We don't really have a happy marriage. Uh, so. You know, the, the gag I normally do is that I'll say wedding anniversary today, which of course it's not, and everyone claps. And I go, yeah, we've been happily married for, you know, 25 years, and everyone claps. And then I go, yeah, we've been married for 32 years, but happily married for 25 of them. And poor Gail has to roll her, you know, she has to pretend she's heard that for the first time. Yeah. Yes, okay, so get emotional, problem and solution. They don't care about the features. If features sold stuff, then Jenny Craig's Facebook ads would have a picture of a bowl of rice. Okay? But she doesn't. She has the what we call shit to gold photos, okay? She has the before and after, like my candy store. That's what sells stuff. You would not even be here now if I hadn't shown you that we've got a pretty good skill at turning shit into gold. That's what we do, whether it's websites or whether it's sales or whether it's Facebook ads. And why is because I'm an old fart. I've done all this shit before. The last person you want to be advising you on marketing is a 27-year-old. And yet, guess what? Most of the marketing managers out there now, it's fine for old fart me to say that, but it's the truth. If you needed heart transplant, do you reckon that you'd pick someone like me that's done it in their sleep a million times and has a pretty good track record, or the kid that got out of medical school who said, you know what, I haven't done this before, but we're going to cut your chest open and give this a hell of a shot. I think you'd go with the guy with experience, if he had logic. And I think what you're seeing here is logic mixed with creativity, okay? Number five, uh, create a website that sells, okay? Do not have a website that just provides information. You want a website that actually sells shit. And there's a, it, there's a system, a formula to that, particularly on the home page. Number six, do events, what you're seeing here right now. And that is called Sell Once to Many. You want to consider doing events. And it doesn't have to be like this. It can be for 10 people. But don't do one-on-one -on -one meetings. We hardly have any of those these days. And it's not because I've got my head up my backside. It's just that one-on-one, -on -one, it just doesn't make any sense, does it? You've got to put your gear on. You've got to drive to the meeting. You've got to pretend you like them. And then you, know, you go through the meeting. And then you've got to fight traffic on the way home. You lose half a day. Don't do that. Just do a Skype call with six prospects or just do one of these or just do webinars or just do podcasts. But you don't want one-on-one -on -one meeting. Sure. I mean, one-on-one -on -one meeting with the grader I do every day of the week. The grader was paying me 34500 a month consultancy. That's what they were paying. Now, they got Seinfeld and their net worth went up quite a few billion dollars when I got that stuff for them. So I know who got the better end of the stick. But still, thirty-four and a half grand a month is pretty good. Uh, Parramatta Leagues were paying 10, no, 12, $12,000 a month. Majuri T were paying 10. That was in the old world when I was a consultant. These days, we give people the same wizardry, but for two and a half a month because I can scale. I've got an implementation coach helping me make this happen. You still get the brain power from me, so you don't have to pay 34 a month, but we actually still make money out of it because we can scale. And the reason we can scale is because of the systems that we have behind us and all these sorts of resources, which you'll see you can get access to. Um, but what you want to do is use this mentality. I wish I'd learnt this damn thing you know, earlier than five years ago, this you know, so once to many thing, because I wouldn't have done so many meetings. You do not want to do a onesie twosie meeting. That's like a waste of time, unless it was a $35,000 sale. Okay, a month. Uh, video testimonials, we'll show you how to do those. Um, you do not want um, video testimonials from Beryl who say, hello, I would just like to say, Jim, the electrician, fix my PowerPoint and... Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, and <coughs> oh, shut up, Beryl. Uh, you do not. People have got that on their websites. Beryl coughing. We do not. You want Beryl to say what life was like before uh, Bill the electrician versus what life is like now after Bill the electrician. It's got to be a shit to gold story, all right? Uh, and people, I mean, they. Yeah, well, first of all, um, testimonials. Who has video testimonials at the moment on their website? Oh dear. Okay. Oh dear. Um, okay, so therefore, um, uh, who has testimonials on their website, written ones? Right, no one has ever read them, okay? We've done heat mapping on enough websites to know that nobody but nobody but nobody goes to your testimonial page. So just forget it or leave it there, but you know, maybe get your relatives to look at it every now and again. 
you need to get video testimonials and pick out the top two or three and put them on what page? Which page? Your home page, okay? Your home page. Particularly if you've got a 60 or 70 or 80% bounce rate on your home page, don't even bother. <laughs> Which is probably the case. Most people that come on our program, that was a Dr. Evil laugh, wasn't it? I'll do that again. <laughs> That was sort of like making fun of you, which is not a good sales ploy, is it, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. So you can say that you came to a seminar not with a consultant but with an insultant. That's what you can say to others. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Okay, so the thing is, is that if you've got a high bounce rate, it doesn't matter what you put on your home page. Um, yeah, you're wasting your time. So you've got to fix that home page. We'll show you about that. Uh, number eight, get free publicity. And that's all about uh, making sure that the radio stations and the newspapers and online publishing houses actually want to you know, talk about your story. Uh, and what we do in here is we give templates. So therefore, you don't have to ever worry about sending out a media release and dreaming it up yourself. There's media release templates in our program that you just steal and put your name into. Number nine, uh, deliver extraordinary customer service. Uh, I've done many, many courses in Orlando, Walt Disney World. And uh, what they do is that they teach you dreaming and doing, they call it. And uh, Disney are renowned together with Apple as probably being one of the uh, best customer service companies in the world. They don't believe in customer service, they believe in providing extraordinary customer experiences. Okay, so that's what you want to do. You want to have a customer experience and not just give good service. If you, who raves about the restaurant tomorrow morning, if you, you go to tonight, if they just gave you good service? No one. But if they gave you extraordinary knock your socks off customer experience, so therefore when you said, look, I really don't want dessert, we're looking after our tummy these days, they came out with a sample platter of little bite-sized pieces and said, look, we won't tell anyone, how about you just have that on the house? Would that blow you away? Or free coffee even, but they don't even do that because they're suffering from that disease called dickheaditis. They are dickheads, okay? These things do not take a lot to actually execute. Uh, number 10, build repetitive trade, and you can only do that, of course, if you collect data. So therefore, you want to be able to have a loyalty scheme, and the only way you can have a loyalty scheme is if you know who's loyal. And the only way you know who's loyal is if you collect data. And this is the big one. Okay, this is the big, big, big 40 ton gorilla that you have to get good at, otherwise Amazon are going to wipe you out. Uh, who's in the products game? I'm in the information game. I'm pretty safe. Amazon's not going to wipe me out. Who sells a product? Who sells a product? Can we, you, you, seriously, there's only three people in the room that sell a product? Okay, right. well, a bit more. I know the rest of you are busy writing, but if you sell a product, watch out, because Amazon is out to wipe you out. Anybody seen too many milk bars in Australia these days? No, 7-Eleven took them out. And what you're going to find is if you don't catch up on this game, the social media thing, which is basically my old world stuff, well, to me, it's my old world stuff now brought into the new world, which makes it so much more laser targeted and so much more easier. Basically, if you don't do that, you're in deep trouble because this Amazon mob are going to come and take you out. And last but not least, uh, how to put together a marketing plan. So therefore, in this 12-step system, at the very end, when we go through everything, we show you how to put the marketing plan together. And this is how you put a marketing plan together. This is a three minute video and I'll show you, this is what you need in a marketing plan. This happens to be an events company uh, and I'll show you what happened. Uh, within 10 days of meeting them, we put this marketing plan together. You'll see how comprehensive it is. So here's the format of my well, marketing action plans. You'll see this one happens to be for a, uh, a visual, audio visual events company. Uh, broken up into three sections of my marketing plans. There's the overview, then there is the website. So I go through what the website design should look like. And then there's the overall marketing suggestions, okay, which is a small board of ideas. Let me just take you uh, through a typical one. Happens to be an overview for this particular, you know, events AV company. Uh, I go through all the sorts of details that I've gained from their questionnaire, uh, their major competitors, uh, what they're doing to upsell to current clients, um, who their major competitors are. You'll see it's all listed here. I go through and I ask them in the questionnaire, are they positioning themselves as the expert? And if they're not, then of course I'll know through the damage of the report how I can help them position themselves in that area. Uh, in this instance here, we then get through to the website. I give an overview of what I think their website um, is looking like at the moment, uh, whether I give them a, a couple of ticks of approval or whether I give them a hard time. Normally it's a hard time, but that's okay. Then I give them the recommendations and recommendations for the website. I go through what I think they should be having on the homepage and they should have a better driven headline. In their instance, Australia's number one audio visual experts for events and functions, sit back, relax, and let's, let us look after all the technical, theatrical issues for you. In other words, we take it over for you, or one-stop shop, then I explain to them what they might need in an explanatory video. I then go through what the video should look like in the context of companies where they get the video done. Uh, I 
talked to them about it very important why they need that in there. I talked about the Macbeth menu board and so on and so forth. I, uh, I basically go through what they should have. Then I go through their sub pages and I tell them what they should have on their services page, uh, their showcase page, the white cheese hub page, and so forth. Then I give them a, basically my contact details of website companies. If they wanted to get the website done from people in our supplier list, I talked to them about the preview port, not to get too frightened with it, just how you can simply put together a two or three page preview port. And then I give them a layout of what their homepage should look like. So therefore here you'll see that I've given them a layout, I've given them what they should have above the, uh, the menu bar, what the consisting statement should be, what they should have in their, their welcome video and so on and so forth. So the full layout of their website there. And then I go through the marketing plan and show them again what they should do. I'll just reiterate because it's obviously a big part of the marketing, what they should do with the website, go through Facebook advertising, show them what a Facebook ad should look like, uh, give them the copy that they should be using, uh, remarketing, telling them how I use remarketing and why they should use it for their business, search engine optimization, Google AdWords. We do a uh, Google AdWords, I'm sorry, we do a Google keyword search uh, for the business to see what sort of phrases are being searched uh, in whatever cities they're in. Uh, and then email marketing, I showed them exactly what they should be doing with email marketing. They haven't had a list. We talk about video books and how they might like to use that. This particular company is a B2B, so therefore using video books like this could be a real bonus to get through the gatekeeper. It's always difficult to get through the gatekeeper, and this is a great way of doing it. Uh, we talked about SMS marketing, and I give them an example. In this instance, it's an AV company. If you're having a digital function coming up and you want the best audio visual equipment to buy in Australia, talk to us now. Special April offer where you get a free XYZ click here for me for more details. And I'll show you how that SMS marketing sends people to the landing web page, and then of course you can do the sell. I show them direct mail campaigns. Uh, in this instance, this particular company has a number of different uh, prospects, and so therefore I put together some brochures, uh, layouts, and show you exactly how they should actually put together a full page brochure to meet your full page brochure. Uh, then we go through events, and ironically, this particular company is a, an event management company of sorts because they're an AV company and audio visual, so I show them how they should be holding events, inviting their prospects to dinner, and uh, selling them. In other words, do what I do, and I show them some examples of other companies that have done that. Uh, I show them how the invitation might look, so we give a bit of a rough uh, idea, or more than a rough idea, a pretty clear idea of what the invitation should look like, and then we conclude. Okay, so uh, who thinks that's a pretty comprehensive marketing plan? Yep, that's what you need. That's what you need for your business. I don't care whether you're doing a hundred or two or three hundred thousand uh, dollars, or whether you're doing a million or two million or three million. That, that's what you need. You need a marketing plan like that. And I can tell you that you know if I'm positioning myself as the um. You go to an advertising agency, which I know most of us in the room probably wouldn't because they're very expensive, but if you went to an ad agency, you get one of those ideas in maybe a month or two's time. You wouldn't get a structured marketing plan that goes for 30 pages, and it wouldn't be based and customised on your needs and your wants. Okay, so here we go. Social media, two-step sell. I'm going to show you how you should be using Facebook. And uh, really, at the end of the day, this particular company here, I'll, I'll take it off for a second. It's an online pet company, pet food company. If you were selling pet food, who are you wanting to talk to? People who have a pet, okay? So wouldn't it be good if you flushed all of those people out and got them to glow in the dark? Yep. But what this company used to be doing is that they would put a Facebook ad together and if that was the graphics part of it, they would show pictures of pet food. That would be like Jenny Craig showing a picture of a bowl of rice. We are not turned on by a picture of pet food. I have not seen anyone get an orgasm over a can of pow. Um, well, maybe dogs, but yeah, no, not humans, all right? So therefore, if you're selling to humans, uh, then of course you don't want to sell the feature, you want to sell the benefit. And the best way to do that is to actually find out all the people in that particular postcode area or wherever you're selling these. Um, basically get them to put their hand up and say, I own a pet. So what we've done here is to grab your smartphone and snap a photo of your beloved pet in a cute pose. Why? Because you could be the winner in our cutest pet in the world contest. And when you take that photo and post it up to their Facebook page, you have just glowed in the dark as somebody, an, an owner, a pet owner and guess what pet owners need to buy pet food and we can provide it to you online same thing here with the jewelry shop we just want to uh, basically women use instagram heavier than men and so therefore and both facebook they'll tell you that this is the one he's good it's tim i've been going out with tim for six months and he's the one well we know all about that because they post it on their profile and what we do is that we chase them down with the lookalike audience and we have a contest to say if you've been getting couple selfies, here's your chance to turn one of them into a $5,000 engagement ring. If you're the most romantic couple's photo in the world, you could win that, that ring. And what they do is take a photo or post a photo of them and their husband-to-be. And guess what? We know they're engaged. And we know then what happens is that a week later we say, look, you didn't win the ring. 
but we know you're interested in one, we've got this special, special offer. Do you notice that it's collecting data first and then selling? That's why we call it a two-step sell. Um, okay, so therefore what you have to walk away from here today is say, look, okay, everything I do in social media advertising should be sending leads to a landing page. And on that landing page, you've got a specific offer and that should have a time or quantity limitation. Most likely time in most instances. So this offer will only be available until Friday at five o'clock. This happens to be a, an example of a small fashion boutique on the Gold Coast. Um, they, uh, they said to me, look, uh, we are the exclusive stockists of the, uh, four two, uh, sorry, the, the, they're called Boutique 4217, which is a silly name, it's a postcode. Why people do that, I don't know. They asked me, was that the worst name I'd ever seen for a business? I said, no, dog shit, well, it probably is, um, but it comes pretty close, okay? Why would you call the name of your business a postcode? I don't know. But anyway, so therefore, this boutique sells the uh, clothing from the Bachelor TV show. They had the exclusive stockists of the Bachelor TV show. Thank you, Simon. And uh, so therefore, uh, what we did is we said, well, what do you, you got a problem? They said, we've got a problem. We've got all these pants suits the girls are going to be wearing on the Bachelor TV show, but we've told no one about it. Remember, we said before that what you uh, do is 100 times less important of ma versus marketing what you do. So what we did on Facebook is we actually just zeroed in on the 10 kilometer radius uh, around this particular retail store in Surface Paradise. And we said, guess what? We are the exclusive stockists of the outfits from this season's Bachelor TV show. Simply vote for your favorite color and you could win it. What are we doing there? Anyone want to take a stab at that? What are we doing by getting women? By the way, the lookalike audience were women 30 to 50 within a 10 kilometer radius. And that's the great thing about Facebook. We can just isolate them and put this ad in front of women 30 to 50 who lived in the store. When we ask them to vote for their favorite jumpsuit, do you think they're telling us that they might want to win a jumpsuit? That's weird that it came from you, John. So that we've got all these women in the room here, but you, yeah. Well, you're the only one showing a sign of life at the moment too. So that could have been why you answered. Uh, okay, so therefore what happens is they click there, they go through to the landing page and on the landing page, of course, they give us all their details. And then a week later, they get a phone call to say, you didn't win the jumpsuit, but guess what? We know that you want it get the jumpsuit because you've entered a contest to win the contest. We've got the jumpsuit that you're after, the one that you voted for, the red one, for a special offer of bloom. So they've glowed in the dark and said that we want the jumpsuit. Is there a better way to market? No way. This is insane and it's so easy. And when they're on that landing page, just in case they're interested in some other stuff, we'll tell them we've got other clothes, of course. This is the aluminium fence company in uh, Gosford, New South Wales. And this is how they used to run their Facebook ad. Do you think they're showing the benefit of the aluminium fence there or the features? Okay. So therefore, this would be, yeah, like showing a picture of your ugly child, okay? So they've got here, Thompson, wait for the language. Talk about academic, like, freako industry language. Because um, lovely guy that owned this, but he came from the Peter Jackson 50s demographic, like, <laughs> J.D. have been using this face page thing. It's not working. Okay, fair enough. So this is the face page thing that he was using that wasn't working and you can see why it wasn't, okay? Thompson Fencing has been established for over 22 years and we completed over 14,000 aluminum fence installations. <laughs> um, we cater to homeowners, strata plans, and we provide measuring, pre-treatment, powder coating, fast coating. If you need an aluminum fence, we're, we're the ones. At Thompson Fencing, we create aluminum fencing. I know it looks great today, but ensure it will look just as good in years to come. We provide superior powder coating treatment, the highest quality material, latest colours to choose from. We're fully insured and licensed. We don't, oh, please, you've just bored the crap out of me. So what we did there is when he was making no money out of that, I said, who are you after? Anyone want to take a stab? If you're going to give someone a replacement for their fence and it's beautiful aluminium fencing, what sort of people do you think you're after? People who live in brand new homes or people who live in homes that have got an old paling fence from 30 or 40 years ago? Of course, the latter. So we took over and this is what we did. We ran the ugliest back fence in Australia contest and we zeroed the ads in only in the postcodes whereby there were older homes. And we said, take a photo of your crappy fence and post it to our Facebook page and you are dead in the water. Because yeah, we're going to lure you there by winning the, having a chance to win an aluminium fence makeover, which would cost you nothing. But of course, what we collected is incredible data from people who had shit fences. And we tested a few ads. That happens to be one. That's the other one. What do you think happened there? In three days, we had to turn the campaign off. He rang us up and said, stop. Uh, that's what his Facebook page looked like, of course. They've just given everything to him, including their blood group, all right? And uh, he got two years worth of leads in three days. He spent $514 on Facebook and had two years worth of leads. That's what happened. Thank you for that. Could you say that a bit later? Wow, wow thank you. Oh, see, you're a leader. They're just all followers. Yeah. Um, so that's how you use this thing, a two-step sell. 
I'll have another example here. This happens to be a kitchen renovator. And we did the same thing. We get in the vote for their favorite kitchen. These are real kitchen designs, okay? So we're saying if you're tired of your old-fashioned kitchen, imagine having the makeover you always dreamed of. Simply take 15 seconds. Why do we say 15 seconds? Because we know they're lazy, right? We want to make it easy. Vote for your favorite kitchen. We have two new incredible kitchen designs we want to get feedback on, which is the most popular. So could you help us out by giving us feedback? When they press that, they go through to a landing page and it says vote for kitchen A or B. And then after they've given us everything here, we say to them, how old is your kitchen? If they say 18 years and then the other person says 30 years, which is the one you think we ring up first? The 30 years, of course. Look, I'm sorry you didn't win the prize, but obviously you've got a shit kitchen. So therefore, we've got this special, special deal at the moment. Would you like a free assessment? We'll come out and visit you. Do you realise that what we're getting is warm prospects to put their hand up and glow in the dark? And if you say, but we haven't got $10,000, don't worry. We give you the $10,000 for 400 bucks. And you're sitting there at the moment going, well, actually... Um, could, could I get all of you to, when I say that again, all of you together would go uh, uh, WTF, but you do it like, yeah, okay, so therefore, uh, you don't have to come with the $10,000, we'll give you the $10,000 for uh, $400. No, no, it was WTF, would you get with the program? You are not coming on tour with me with any more of these things if you don't wake up yourself. So if, yes, exactly, yeah. Now what it is is that uh, these prizes are insured. And when people come under our program, we actually give you the contact of the insurance company that does this, and uh, they actually will give you the $10,000 prize for 400 bucks. So you can actually then put horsepower behind your Facebook ads like no one else can in your category. And how it works is at the end of that week long or two weeks or month, however long you run it, uh, you, but if it's only costing you $400, I'd run this thing probably weekly or fortnightly, and then, you know, because you can only ring up the people to say you didn't win, after you've supposedly, you know, given the prize away, you see. So therefore, I'd run little bursts like a week or two weeks at a time, it's only 400 bucks. And what happens is that, well, first of all, uh, just so I know there's some love in the room, who would like me to explain to you how you get 10 grand for 400 bucks? Yep. Okay, uh, and I can give you a million dollars for 16 grand, okay? You can get half a million dollars for eight grand. Uh, so Eddie Maguire doesn't give any of that money away on Channel 9. Channel 9 doesn't give it away, it's all given away by an insurance company. So Channel 9 pay an insurance premium based on the difficulty of those questions. So when Kerry Packer was dying, he said, look, I want to get more million dollar prizes out there. So they made the questions easier and Channel 9 paid a high premium, okay? So what happens is that in this instance, at the end of the week or two or month, whatever it might be, you draw out a preliminary winner, Mrs. Smith, and then what happens is that she's invited to then go to a website and that looks like that. And she plugs in a number here uh, between one and 250. So it's a one in 250 chance. You might plug in there, you know, 82. And then she presses spin, there's a spin button that pops up here, and drrr, that goes around online. If 82 comes up, she gets a $10,000, I mean the insurance company doesn't care whether it's a kitchen or a trip to Disneyland, they don't really care, but she gets the $10,000 prize. And if one of the 249 other numbers come up, then she gets a consolation prize that you provide. Now whether or not in the kitchen's instance that might be a free dinner set, or it could be a trip to the Gold Coast, or whatever it may be. So you've got to come up with a consolation prize, but you get the big Elvis found headline of win $10,000 for 400 lousy bucks. And you get a million dollars for 16 grand. And I was telling people at breakfast this morning, we had a holiday resort called the Hideaway Resort in Fiji, which was about half an hour along the coral coast. And uh, it was 30 years old and it was only sitting on 34% occupancy. And so what we did is that we said, well, who's your target audience? First question, who's your most profitable target audience? And he said, uh, basically real estate, uh, sorry, travel agents along the east coast of Australia. So we sent out a notification to them and said, look, for every night you book someone into the Hideaway Resort, we'll give you a chance to win $1 million. We'll give you a ticket. And uh, guess what happened? Uh, every travel agent, when you went in and said, oh, look, I'm thinking about going to Fiji, they go, yeah, look, Hideaway Resort. And you go, well, what about the Sofitel near the airport? Rabies. Oh, okay. Um, what about the Hilton, Ebola? Oh, what about any of the hotels near Port Denaru near the airport? Hepatitis C. Well, I guess I'll go to the Hideaway Resort then. So they took the Hideaway Resort because of that million dollar incentive for every night that a, real, that a travel agent booked someone in, they got a ticket into the million dollar, went from 34 to 96% occupancy in one week. And it sat there for the three months of the promotion. They didn't put in a new pool, they didn't renovate any rooms, they didn't put any palm trees in. All they did was create a Happy Meal toy incentive. And it's what I call an artificial wow factor. And if you want to know what they are, it's a Happy Meal toy. It's two years interest free from Harvey Norman. And it's a toy in the bottom of the box for cornflakes that we've all been seeing for 50 years. You see, if you've got an organic wow factor, you don't need an artificial one. I've got an organic one. I don't need an artificial wow factor. I'm the only guy in the country that does this shit, okay? And I don't care whether it sounds like I'm boastful. I just know that there's no one else there doing it. Uh, and so I don't need to give anything away for free. 
But if you don't have an organic wow factor that no one else has got, then you've got to do what the Greater Building Society does, did. And that is pull out a free holiday. Pull out some other bonus that you give that will differentiate you from the competitors. Okay, uh, this one here happens to be a client on board who makes uh, uh, this thing here called, uh, I don't know what it is, little, little crystals or what have you, and you put this into a core flute garbage bin. Um, first of all, you put your dog poo in there from your backyard, you sprinkle this on top, and it effectively turns to compost and disappears. Um, pretty attractive product. It's amazing how you know, people make money out of different things these days. But you'll see here what the ads uh, would look like normally. Environmentally dispose of pet waste with pet waste wizard in our bio bin. Uh, use our bio bin together with pet bacteria. You can make a dog waste disappear. Who thinks that that's showing the features? And does that anybody sort of go, wow? I don't think so. So this is what we do. Uh, the Facebook ad then says, are you a dog owner? Aren't you sick and tired of not knowing what to do with smelly, unsightful poo in your backyard? Now there's a solution. Then basically blah, 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 blah. Uh, and you've got a chance to win one for free. Simply answer three survey questions. Win a magic disappearing poo bin. They call it the West, the pet waste wizard for dogs. We call it, or I call it, a disappearing poo bin. We have copywriters around us that say, well, let's turn that Chinese into English. What the hell does this bin do? It makes shit disappear. Well, let's just say that, all right? So therefore, that's what we did. And then they go through to a landing page. And what we do is even back them into a corner before we get their details. We just ask them to fill in the survey. Do you own a dog or cat or both? So they tell us what they have. Is it always a nuisance getting rid of the pet waste from your yard after you scoop it up? The answer is yes. And would a disappearing poo product like this solve all your, like, yes. They've just not only given us their details, but they've said, yes, 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 I want your product. So what happens is that, you know, when the draw is done and they don't win, they get a phone call to say, listen, you didn't win the contest, but guess what? We've got this incredible deal at the moment where you can buy three for the price of two, whatever it might be. Does it make sense to collect data in a two-step sell and then sell? Of course it does. Do not try and sell one off. This one here uh, is in Melbourne. Again, he makes these stone walls, so we do exactly the same thing. Uh, you're in the draw to win a $10,000 natural stone makeover. Just simply vote A or B, and that's what the landing page looked like. Okay, and uh, guess what? This is the result that this guy got. He just sent this a couple of weeks ago. He's done a new client. Hi, JD. Great news. We had 25 leads for just $51 in foot. 20, I mean, he sells these things for between five and 10 grand. His conversion rate could be one in 300 and it would still be profitable. He's got 25 leads at $2 a lead. That's nuts. And uh, this one here, water filters. Uh, again, a uh, features advertisement. Who thinks that's sexy? Is that giving anyone hard nipples at the moment? I don't think so, okay? So therefore, that is features, not benefits. You don't want to be doing that. So in this instance here, let's read the copy. You can get a GTI 26.5 reverse osmosis water filter stage five under sink alkaline filter. Oh, please, I just want clean water. Um, now, I've got to say to you is that what's the scary thing? The scary thing is that 90% of all of us, our tap water contains uh, lead, uh, arsenic, all sorts of nasty stuff. Is that getting that message across? No. Uh, wait till you read the copy. Uh, it must have been written by, you know, a technician. If you're concerned about the quality of waters coming from your dad, book a free home water assessment consultation. He gets a 50% close rate on those. So therefore, if he gets into a home, one out of two of them, you'll sell this $3,000 filtration system that goes under the sink, right? Uh, we'll arrange a time to visit and provide you with a health check of your home's water. We can give you a wide range of filtration system choices, but highly recommend our reverse osmosis under sink alkaline filter. <laughs> so we change that to look like that. Notice one is features, one is solutions. Okay, so what we say is shocking statistic. Macquarie University studies found that Sydney families are being exposed to high levels of copper and lead contamination in their tap water. Parents are justifiably concerned given this contaminated tap water is used on morning coffee baby formula. You are killing your baby. Okay, and meal preparation. Uh, our water filtration company is launching a new reverse osmosis miracle tap water filter system. Therefore, we're interested in the opinion of households regarding the tap water in the home. Hence, this 60 second Facebook survey where you're invited to answer just five easy questions for your chance to win one of the filtration systems. Answer these five questions about tap water to be in the drawer. Then they go through, and you'll notice here she is really upset. She's worried. She just looks like life's turned to shit. Well, it looks like it has there. Um, and uh, amazing Photoshop, isn't it? Uh, and then, of course, once they've got the system, look how happy they are. Everyone's happy. Even the ugly children, they were happy, okay? 
So therefore, uh, we ask them, is the health and well-being of your family the highest priority? What do you think they're going to say? Uh, have you at any time been concerned about the purity of your water? What do you think they're going to say? And have you periodically noticed the taste of your tap water is not as crisp as it used to be? Blah, blah. They've just put their hand up and said, I want the filtration system. So when they get contacted to say, look, I'm sorry you didn't win the prize, but would, we like, would you like us to come out and do an assessment? Nuts. Just easy. It's just so easy. Okay. Um, and you'll see here, this is the guy himself from the water filtration system, JD, your bloody legend, haha. -ha. Just over 24 hours after launching our campaign, we received 19 competition entries, outstanding result, can't believe how fast you guys work. And a couple of days later, he says we've got 45 leads. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, a couple of days later, I think it went to 100, he's up to 100 now. So out of that 100, even if he gets 50 of them to say, yes, I'd like the water assessment thing in my home, he'll close 25 of those. And 25 times 3,000 will be, uh, what's that? What's 25 times 3? 75 grand, is it? And he would have spent just a few hundred dollars on Facebook. Pretty good ROA. Who thinks this stuff is making sense to them? Okay. What I thought we'd do at this point, so that you can see what happens when somebody does hang around us, that it's not just all scripted like this. I thought what we'd do is a hot seat uh, and uh, bring someone up here and have a look at your website. And what we'll do is that then what we will, um, uh, we'll just make fun of you. It, 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 and by the way, the thing is, is that uh, you cannot uh, come to one of these. Well, if you decide to do anything with us, by the way, you have to sign a form that you've got no feelings uh, because there's a very good chance that they will be hurt. Um, this is the opposite from Anthony Robbins. Uh, Anthony Robbins, if you are suicidal or uh, suffering from anxiety or depression, he will save you from killing yourself. In our instance, if we see your website shit ass, I'll tell you to kill yourself. So it's, uh, it's very different. Uh, and the girls have picked someone out of a hat, have you girls? Nola. Nola. Oh, shit. Nola, uh, we've got a stool up here. I thought we would. Yep, okay. Um, oh, here's one here. Okay. Okay, so therefore, Nola. Uh, Nola, do you have any feelings? Good. Terrific, terrific. Good stuff. And this will be all done in the spirit of having a bit of fun, guys. So therefore, thanks, Nola, for being, good spirit, for being a good sport. We hear that. We hear that all the time. Yeah, we hear that all the time. So uh, Jody will give you a microphone, and we've got someone going to bring the website up. No, no website. So if, can you? I don't know. Have you got the website up? Uh, Nola. So therefore, did I tell you about the five nude nuns that walked into a bar? Because uh, we've got to kill five minutes now for some reason. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, we got a website. Can, well, can you give? Yeah. 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 Five nuns walk into a bar. <laughs> okay. I thought when my crew were holding up a sign, they had it already, but anyway. Okay. Right, so therefore, can you put the microphone up and tell everyone a bit about your business? Um, okay, I've got a massage business, and yoga studio. Um, it's in the wall. And I mean, it's in where, sorry? It's in? It's in the mall. Well, uh, Brisbane Mall, is it? Okay, right. Okay. So therefore, if I said to you, let's have a look at the website. If I said to you, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, okay, and I know you're doing a new website at the moment, so it's not quite fair to, um, to, to you know, probably critique this, but obviously that was not responsive designed. Uh, it's probably an older website that's been around for a while. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And I understand that you, you, you're uh, doing a new website. Uh, let's just read through here. Welcome to Need Massage and Natural Therapies. We're relaxing and Light multi-service clinic, yoga studio, offering a range of bodywork options, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, okay, fine. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And when we click on, the, we won't do it, but when we click on any of these, we go through to a, a, a page. Okay, do you know your bounce rate at the moment? Um, no. Yeah. It's high. I know I'd say it'd be high. I'd say you... Just a bit closer, if you don't mind. Yeah. Sorry, it's, yeah, it's uh, that microphone doesn't work, by the way. Yeah, okay. I have a high bounce rate. Yeah, high bounce rate. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Right here, um, right here. So therefore, we because you're getting a new website done, I won't sketch up. Normally, what we do here is a website. And uh, who thinks at the moment that the headline of uh, and I know you may be changing this, uh, but first of all, can I ask you, you're getting the website done through a website designer? Um, yeah, I've got a, a company in Milton, and at the moment, I go. I'd be. I'd love to see what you would do for me okay right out. we'll do that quickly so therefore what we would do is that we would have one of your customers uh, who uh, is your most profitable customer so if you said to me well let's ask you who's your most profitable customer female aged uh, between, um, I'd say 
Okay. We've got about 60% women and 40% men in, on the massage side. Good, good. And the most uh, profitable one is massage? Yes, at the moment. Okay. I, I wanted to look over that massage is what drives the business. Good. So massage is the most profitable customer. So who do you think we should put at the very top of this page? The most profitable picture of the most profitable customer? Do you notice on those, uh, those Greater Building Society ads, we had working class people. Remember, I had a bit of fun about the guy with the motorbikes outside and Hell's Angels, this, that, and the other. Well, that's who the customers are for a building society. For a credit union, a building society, they're more likely going to be a working class person. A bank, they're going to be wearing a coat and tie. So, therefore, when Seinfeld signed up for this, he said, Listen, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be involved in your ads if you've got those ugly people with flannelette shirts and thongs. Uh, I've got a bigger brand than you. And I said, Well, that might be so, but they're our customers. So, we ended up doing a deal that he was happy to go ahead as long as I forced the working class people to have teeth. Uh, so we featured people with teeth and, uh, and no flannel shirt. So what you've got to do is that in your advertising, you have to feature imagery of your most profitable target audience. People are attracted to people like them. Do you think I hang around boring people? No, I hang around cheeky, not even at this age. The, my mate, an Italian called Dominic Bonanno, doesn't know this. God, I hope he's not watching this on Facebook Live. But I'm the one that for the last 25 years, he's been getting that dirty Valentine's Day card from. Okay, I want to pour chocolate all over your body and lick it. He thinks it's a, an Amara. It's me. If he finds out it's me, then I'll wake. He's Italian. I'll wake up with a horse's head next to me. So I hang around with guys that are still scoring points with each other at this age. So you normally are attracted to people who are like you. I mean, everyone vote for them. That most of your friends are sort of in the same sort of personality traits as you. That's the way it is. Boring people hang around with boring people. Interesting people like me hang around with interesting people. Gail, my wife, she hangs around boring people. Okay, I won't go into that. Um, okay, so therefore, so therefore, uh, this is your customer here. So she's 30, uh, did you say 35 plus? Yes. Okay, and she's earning good money. She's earning, what, 75K, 100K? Oh, yes. Let's say 75K for argument's sake. And she is saying, uh, and what, what is your most profitable massage? Remedial? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, the best remedial massage I have ever had. Okay, and then there's some subcopy on there that she goes on a bit about. Okay, so therefore the headline from your website is straight away because you're going to try through Facebook ads to pour more people who look like her into your. So the first image they're going to come across is basically an image of them, and it's saying this is the best I've ever had. And then what, underneath that headline, it would be my bad back that I've had for 14 years was gone in 48 hours or whatever it is, but it's a shit to gold story. Yeah. You see, at the moment, this is just, it's rubbish, to be honest with you. And if, yeah, if you're going to replicate that copy uh, into a new website, it will do nothing for you, okay? Because it's basically information. Welcome to need message. You don't need to welcome anyone. Okay, so therefore you don't need to welcome anyone, you just need to get stuck straight into it. So therefore the other thing that you need, of course, and I don't know whether you're going to have it, is that um, you need this. Do you have video on your new website? No. Okay. Who thinks that when you've got a range of services like that, acupuncture and uh, uh, yoga, you've got seated massage, corporate, who thinks that having a, an overview video showing how remarkable that is would be an asset? Of course it would be. Because, you know, the thing is, the reason video is so important on websites these days is because, you know, we're all lazy. We don't want to read copy. So this here would not be just a simple overview video whereby it's a fly on the wall where it's just the imagery of people doing that because that's a little bit violin. What you want are more people like her coming on going, I can't believe this. I, can't, I had a bad neck for 12 years, you know, and it's gone. I've tried before and it's... Up here, up here, yep. How do I get people to do that? <coughs> you only need three or four people, okay? Um, if you look at my website, you'll see something like 38 video testimonials. And you might say, oh, that's you, JD, because you do what you do for a living. You can encourage them to do that. Yeah, sure, okay, I understand that. Um, but I can guarantee you we could get three or four or five people to do that. Um, you, what you would do is you'd probably just invite those people to a dinner like this, uh, and we'd have them in a you know, lovely dinner setting. And then they would be invited. To, they'd be told what's happening, of course. I'm not saying you'd hijack them. And say, look, would you, any chance at all you could, we just have a video guy come in and we just do this. Okay. Let me show you how easy it is. Okay. And I'm not going to video this, but uh, 
Uh, I'll just do Lou, pretend that there's nothing here, Lou, I'm not doing it. Uh, Lou, can I just ask you, uh, nice and loud, so I can hear, um, you've been, only been into this three-hour seminar for two hours at the moment. Have you found this to be one of the more... Now, you've got to repeat my question and your answer. So if I said, what football team do you break for? You couldn't say Brisbane because no one will ever know. I'm, I'm going to cut my voice out of it. You've got to say my best, my favourite football team is Brisbane. So, Lee, can I say this is one of the best seminars you've ever been to? This is one of the best seminars I've ever been to. And can I ask you, have you found the substance in this, particularly with online marketing, has been valuable? The substance with this particular online marketing has been extremely okay. valuable. So, therefore, you see what I mean? So the point is, is that when you get them to pose your question in their answer, you can dot this thing. I mean, I would have half a dozen video testimonials done for you within a week. They've just done, okay? And if you said, look, we don't want to invite them to dinner, good, fine, okay. Invite them for a free massage and we'll just bring a camera guy in, like that guy there who's doing this. Well, the guy down there, Jonathan, they'll come in for a relatively modest amount of money and it'll be just done. Because guess what? Inside this here, there's an entire chapter on how to get video testimonials. So you just follow the damn system. That's all you do, okay? And I might be making it sound easy, but it is easy. So therefore, in this instance here, the other thing that you probably want to do, this here would be a series of uh, testimonial after testimonial, ship to gold, ship to gold, ship to gold, uh, very similar to what you would see on infomercials on TV. And, and then what you would probably do here is uh, maybe, th this also is going to establish you as the, starts with E, establish you as the expert, okay? And she's doing it up here for you. That video will do it time and time again with lots of other people there. And then what you probably do, you probably have something like a free, what is the sort of report that most people would probably get value out of in your instance? Well, Again, up here, up here. Sorry, I've struggled, I've struggled with thinking about that because most of the time when people want a massage, they wake up and go, oh, crap, my neck hurts. <coughs> I need a massage now. So they'll ring up and, you know, they want something to their hands. But, you know, I don't really know what I would provide to them. Well, maybe like with the mind therapist, we could do something like <coughs> how to get the most out of your, your running training, your marathon or something like that. But okay, well what we do here is we come up with a free report that covers your top three uh, most profitable things because you wouldn't want to do just on the remedial massage. It might be you know, a free report on how you can improve your health and well-being in just three weeks <coughs> by practicing bloom, bloom, bloom. Right. So you've got to understand is that the only reason you guys are here today is because you know, you've got uh, perhaps half an idea that this guy might be able to do things fast. Nobody wants anything slow. We don't even stop for coffee anymore. We do drive throughs We don't buy land anymore and build houses because we're too lazy. We want the house and land package. So therefore, we live in such a fast world that if it doesn't download within five seconds, on the 15th floor of the building, we throw the laptop out of the window, right? So it's fast, 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 fast. And you'll notice that that's why I'm showing you in my program, in my world, we move fast. Because uh, I'll show you how quickly we do websites in a minute. Um, so therefore, you'd have a free report uh, that you're going to be able to give them the information which will be a sell into your program, of course, and just start the information that will actually uh, help improve their lifestyle immediately by doing this, 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 this. Yeah. And when they click there and download that free report, what are they giving you? Of course. And just as you saw the Facebook ads there before where we said to them, oh, how old is your kitchen? You would say, what is your main ailment at the moment? Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually want to promote, like, we've got yoga and massage memberships, and that's actually what I want to promote. So you could do a report around how good okay yep fun. now I don't know the pain points at the moment uh, of you know the majority of your customers but you would say that to us so look these are the pain points that they've got uh, they're finding it hard to get out of bed in the morning da, 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 da. Um, and if you've got testimonials from the 84 year old lady who says you know what I couldn't get out of bed but now since I've been to this I do the four minute mile I jump out of bed in the morning uh, if you can get stuff like that from her then shut the gate it's all over because at the moment, what you've got there uh, is features, features, features. And I suspect, although your new website might be still much more attractive than that and responsive design, it's still going to have features, features, features. And that's what I've been thinking a lot about. I've been looking at it going, there's something missing, but I don't know what to do with it. Yep, yep. And, uh, and look, it just falls into the category that most other people do, and that is you've got a pretty website now, but it still won't sell because it looks pretty, but it doesn't have sales direct response component. Then what I do is probably talk about the three biggest benefits of coming to you because there's lots of you around. There's, there's plenty of these sorts of business, you know that as well as I do. And so therefore, number one benefit, number two, number three. And what you probably would do uh, is, that, I won't draw it here, but you'd probably have further down, not just up here, but you probably have a number of other video testimonials. 
okay? Um, and of course, the other thing you need is your club, your membership clubs. Uh, and in your membership clubs, what you want to do is that you want to give them, how many membership clubs do you have? Uh, only, one. only one. So how much does that cost? Okay. Okay, so, and what does that say then? Okay, so therefore, incredible club savings, and you've got these women over here that are in it, okay, and so they're having a good time, and you say something like, uh, join uh, for uh, X dollars a month, or whatever it might be, and save whatever that is over the year, yeah. and you explain what that is, okay? Um, um, on a Facebook point of view, to draw traffic into the, the website, you probably, from Facebook, let me just say this to you, you don't really want to drive traffic from Facebook into your website. Because if they go to your website, then your homepage, like yours would be here, has got all sorts of stuff on it, because that's what the homepage is. You want to drive the traffic from any Facebook ads into a dedicated landing page. Okay, so therefore that dedicated landing page would be just on whatever you've advertised on Facebook. Because on Facebook, I would not imagine that you'd, tr you'd do all of this, um, naturopathy and uh, corporate massage and yoga. You'd actually pick one at a time and promote that. And so if you were going to promote remedial massage, then of course you would have some sort of deal on there, and it may well be. Um, do you think that if you were interested in remedial massage, you'd love to win a year's worth of remedial massage? You reckon? Of course you would. So that's all you do. That's all you do. You just... Yeah. Before, I thought we just, you know, um, win a, a free six month, um, ma you know, either massage or massage and yoga membership. Yep. And then you get a, a ton of leads through that. I, um, I ran a campaign yesterday in Melbourne, just a one day campaign, and it said win um, a complete full day heart starter consultancy at your office with me, worth over $10,000, but only if you're doing half a million dollars or more turnover. And we had to switch it off last night. I got that many leads from people going, yeah. Now, when they come through to our landing page, it tells them all about my background and the wizardry that we have. But we had to turn it off last night because we had that many people. Why did I say, but you have to be the CEO or the owner of a business doing half a million dollars? Why did I say that? Because they, they, well, they're decision makers and also they can drop two and a half grand to me without blinking, okay? Because they're wasting that on the bloody front desk secretary at the moment, probably that plus half again. I know which one they're going to get a bit of ROI out of. And I say to them, the justification for this is because the stuff that I'm going to be showing you will be more suited to a business doing that sort of turnover because you'll be able to afford to actually put the Facebook ads on. You won't be sitting there saying to me, oh, I've only got $15 a day on Facebook. So therefore, I want to attract that customer. And the moment, and because I tell you what, attracting leads for me, that way is a lot easier than doing this. It's a lot easier than doing this. If I just throw like a few hundred bucks yesterday at Facebook in Melbourne, and it just says, you know, would you like to win? I wish we had the, we haven't got it, but no. um, uh, would you like to win uh, a, a, a consultancy, what we call a heart starter consultancy for $10,000 a day, which is what we charge if we're going to sell it uh, with this guy. It's going to flush out all the people doing over half a million dollars who are interested in marketing their business. I don't have to take them to dinner. I don't have to do any of this. They just light up in the dark. So whilst I'm sitting here now, one of the girls in the office is ringing and booking in appointments next week, but based on pre-qualification. So therefore, they've got to have been making mistakes before I will bother having a meeting with them. It's not because I'm you know, precious and I've got my head up my ass. It's just that the easiest people for me to sell my wizardry to are people who've made this mistake. Do you reckon this is an easy sell for me compared to someone who's just starting up a business that's never made a mistake because they've never advertised? Of course. So it's easier to sell drugs to a drug addict, as I said to the people when we had breakfast this morning. So it's easier for me to sell my services to someone who's already screwed up with their advertising compared to someone who's just out of uni who's never advertised. So in your instance, your Facebook ad would be really, really focused each time. So on remedial massage, it would be just win a year's worth or month's worth or two, whatever you think, okay? But you want to make it sexy. Uh, so you want, probably want to make it six months worth or, and you just have an asterisk, that's twice a month or whatever it might be, so you don't send yourself broke. And then guess what? Whoever votes for that, of course, have just put their hand up to say, I want remedial massage. Are they the ideal audience for, the, for you to just send t t uh, SMS and phone? Of course, yeah. it's so easy but nobody does it because most people in your game and in every game will just put a Facebook ad on going, oh, you know what, um, we look after remedial uh, muscular, I can't even pronounce that. What is it? Muscular skeletal. Muscular well, that too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, acupuncture, naturopathy. They would just put the whole smorgasbord in there. 
and then wonder why the Facebook ad didn't work because they didn't send them to a page and collect data and then sell. It's called a two-step sell. First step is getting data, second step is selling. And by the way, all the copywriting, all this sort of stuff, uh, we surround ourselves with guys that think like me, uh, as tragic as that might sound. Uh, and so therefore, the copywriting for all of this sort of stuff, um, don't try and do it yourself, please. If you've got a sort to, I've been, I'm only good at two things. I'm good at this stuff, the marketing stuff, and the other, other good thing I was at when I was younger was soccer. I played a decent level of soccer. Outside of that, I'm hopeless with everything else in life. Just ask my wife. I mean, I, I, I'm hopeless. If a hinge on a door breaks at home, I ring up MacGyver, okay? So the, I believe that if you've got a sore tooth, you go to a dentist, okay? So if you are looking for marketing uh, assistance to build your business and you don't sign up to either me or someone like me, then you're nuts because you're a good technician. So you might you know, be a good dentist, a good doctor, a good whatever you are. But if you don't know how to bring people into your business, you don't know how to create leads and a funnel, then I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, ask yourself, if you don't do something with someone, what the hell are you going to do to get business? Um, so that's it. Look, thank you very much. And uh, if, yeah, I mean, you make a decision whether you want to do anything with this, but I would suggest that um, this would be a classic case. If you looked at uh, Nola's uh, new website, it would be much prettier than that. But I bet you it doesn't have the direct response sales component. So thank you. That's My pleasure. Great. Can you give Nola a hand of us? Okay. <laughs> okay, dokie. Well, we'll get back to the slides and uh, if we can get back to the slides. Um, okay, so therefore, why don't we do this? <clears throat> can I ask uh, you guys, just to give my uh, voice a 60 second break, can I get you to write down just the elevator pitch? This is one sentence or two sentences, the elevator pitch of what your client's problem is and what your solution is? In other words, if you had to write a Google AdWords ad tomorrow, because obviously it's only so many characters, what would you say to your ideal audience in terms of what their problem is and how you could fix it? So in my instance is have your sales flatlined. I can show you how to get an avalanche lead program in operation. That would be mine. I can show you how to get avalanche leads. In your instance, what's your prospect's problem and how are you going to deliver the solution? And don't worry about it's three sentences or four, it doesn't matter. I mean, an elevator pitch normally is around 30 seconds. If you got in the elevator in the Cannes Film Festival with Steven Spielberg and you were pitching a movie to him and it was a comedy in outer space and Spielberg pressed floor number 20, you've got the 20 floors, which is about 15 or 20 seconds, which is called the elevator pitch to convince Spielberg that he should make your movie. And if it was a comedy in outer space, you'd probably say to him, you know what, it's Dumb and Dumber meets Star Trek. And the moment that Spielberg hears that, he, ah, I gotcha, Dumb and Dumber meets Star Trek. It's a comedy out of space. <coughs> And we're giving away a chance to win a million dollars for the best one. Anybody game enough already to put their hand up and say, look, I've nailed it, JD, I've got this down pat, and please don't pick on me. Have you? Okay, can we just put your hand up, mate, so that for JD can get you? So. Just tell us what your business is, too. I'm a business consultant. Sorry? I'm a business consultant. Uh-huh. And that's good, but a bit boring, okay? That's good, whereas if I use words like avalanche, then that's, yeah, that's stronger, okay? So therefore, I'm gonna show you how to get a stampede, an avalanche from your customers. Uh, and I'm telling the truth, I mean, you've seen it already, I'll show you some more examples. It's not like a 10% increase. This is a, so in your instance, um, what I do is probably grab that and just give it some more meat and veggies. Um, and it may well be that uh, it could be, um, I will show you, uh, and it, you know, your subheading, because normally the heading is a headline for the subheading. So the subheading in your instance would be something like, uh, I'll show you how I can achieve an average 42% uh, increase in revenue uh, within the first six months. Uh, because across your particular businesses that you've been involved in, you know, you've helped them reduce overheads and increase sales and all that sort of stuff. But if you've got some stunning statistic like that, well, that would be, you'll see that everything I'm doing here, I'm giving you stats, stats, stats. Remember the first slide I did the lolly shop, the candy shop, and I said he's up 41%. Immediately you go, wow, if it's a $3 million business, 41% on that over a year, that's just one and a half million. Put some meat and veggies behind it, yeah. 
Anyone else? Yep. Good. Just there, Jody. So you're getting good exercise today, Jody. Yeah. If only the exercise could make you taller. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, is your home too small? Oh, sorry. What's your what's your? Oh, sorry, Dave. Um, Urban Design Solutions. We uh, build and design. Good building design. Yep. Is your home too small, dated, or simply not meeting the needs uh, the needs of, needs of your family? We can design your new home or renovation to improve your lifestyle or living space. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, do you specialise in small blocks or anything like that that can actually stand out from everyone else? Because you know all of your competitors are probably going to say something similar. Yeah. Good. We specialise in, um, we do, you know, we do a lot of small, small lots, we do a lot of renovations, raise ups, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, what I say is our specialty is responding to our clients. <coughs> nah, no, not good enough. Dun, dun. Yeah. Okay, so therefore that'd be like me saying, look, when you join the program, yes, you're going to get really friendly service from us. Well, that's bullshit anyway. It won't be friendly, but um, but you're not going to join because of that. Okay, so you know, I don't want you to give that. Can you read that out again? Because as a team, you can see everyone in here is anxious to help you. They're all saying, "Oh, Dave, we want to help you." Uh, could you say that again? What is it? Um, the, yeah, the, 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 the Tama. Is your home too small, dated, or simply not meeting the needs of your family? We can design your new home or renovation to improve your lifestyle and living spaces. Okay, who think that's a bit? <laughs> that's a bit. Ho hum. It's not anybody here got really excited over that? No, no. So what we would have to do, and maybe we don't have the time to do it now, but I would drill down with Dave. No, no, that's not good enough, mate. Is your home too small and you need to sort of you know increase the size of it and we can do it professionally? That's just all business speak. So what we're after is something like um, um, who's your ideal customer at the moment? Who would be your ideal customer? Uh, it's usually professional family. Professional family, so therefore they're wearing a coat and a tie and they've got 2.3 children and the house is too small? Yeah. Okay, so therefore yours would be um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, something like um, um, you're busy, um, you're, you're, you're busy at work, um, busy at work, um, uh, house too small for growing family. Um, we can have design for, you know, more appropriate size house within three weeks or whatever it may be. So. The problem is, are you busy at work? Okay, and you would have an image of someone with a tie on, most likely, right? Uh, uh, you, uh, the home too small for the family. You'd see everyone crushed around, you know, the, the, the table. Uh, guess what? This you know, new home design, which would be more suitable for your needs, can be done within three weeks. Problem solution. Now, that's not the exact one. We trick it up more than that, but that would be a lot sexier than. But can you read yours out again? Is your home too small, dated, or simply not meeting the needs of your family? We can design your new home or renovation to improve your lifestyle and living spaces. Okay, so when we talk about we can design a larger home for you, who thinks it would get your attention if you fell into that target audience a lot quicker if it said within a certain time period, within 21 days? Of course. If we want, when we book a doctor's appointment, we want in tomorrow. And the physiotherapist says, oh, we can get you in, you know, the secretary, I'll get you in a month's time, you know, I'll go somewhere else. Uh, how long would it take you? Um, I made numbers up, but how long would it take you to give even just a, a, an initial sketch? Let's go. Depends whether it's a reno or a, a new home. New home could certainly be within a couple of weeks. Yep. Renovation is, you know, steps that need of to course. happen before. Um, so, you know, probably a month. Okay, well, that's why asterisks were invented. Okay, so therefore it would be asterisks and the conditions at the bottom of the page are, uh, you know, going to cover you. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Thanks, mate. One more? One more? Tracy, just in front of Dave here, yeah. Can we turn up the volume on all this? My name is Tracy, I'm just from my mate. Can you put a bit closer, no one can hear? Yeah, good. Yep. Um, so my thing would be, I'll show you how, how to use your, <laughs> um, I'll show you how, how you can get your conscious and subconscious minds working for you and not against you to get the results you truly want. Okay, can you get a bit closer so everyone can hear and nice and slow again? So. I'll show you how you can get your conscious and subconscious minds working for you, not against you, to get the results you really want. Okay, so Tracy's into white man's witch doctor magic, okay? So therefore, she's into hypnotherapy and this, that, and the other, which to regular people is white man's witch doctor magic. So therefore, let's call it like it is. Uh, how many of you would know about your conscious and subconscious and did a lot of that mean Chinese to you? First of all, can you, can you read out that first sentence again? I'll, I'll show you how you can get your conscious and subconscious minds 
Yeah. Okay. Who who understands your conscious and subconscious mind? Okay, let's put it. Okay, so we've got uh, probably 60% of the room. Okay, right. Um, I, that surprises me. I thought maybe that might be, you know, too academic for a lot of people. Um, what you haven't done there, though, is given them the problem. So therefore, um, for the 40% of the people in the room that didn't understand conscious and subconscious, what would you say, or even to the people who did understand, what would you say is the problem that you're fixing? Because I know you say, well, get them to work for you versus against you, but what's the problem you're fixing? Depression, anxi <coughs> anxiety? Nice and close. Not but anything is too vague. So what we need to do is that all you people are here for one reason. You want to get more leads? Because without leads, you can't do any conversions. You can't make more sales. The main thing you're after is leads. You want more leads. So what's the problem that you'll be fixing? There you go. That's it. That's it. Because without those problems, I think the other, despite the fact that 60% of the room understands the conscious and the subconscious and so forth, I don't think that's going to really get their attention unless you say, do you want to quit smoking? Do you want to stop being anxious? Do you want to get rid of depression? Because I can help you do that within 30 days or whatever it may be, okay? So what I would do is that I would be highlighting to your target audience what their problems are before you give them that solution. Yep. And when you give them a solution that needs to be um, it needs to be a promise in a certain amount of time. Did you notice that I have already seeded in your minds that when people join our, you know, two and a half grand a month program, what happens is that after my first meeting with them, they get that 30 page marketing plan that you saw the video of within 10 working days. That's insane. Who the hell does that? We're talking about, you know, putting a full on marketing plan together that absolutely is customized for your business within 10 working days. That doesn't happen anywhere. Okay, dokie. Okay. Right now, uh, speaking of insane things, um, if you're in the service game, how many people are in the service game? Wow, a lot of them. Steal this idea and use it for your business. I got sick of people asking me the same question, which anyone in the uh, information game probably does, because people ask the same question over and over again. So I built a website called Wow Central, and it's the largest marketing ideas site on the planet. There's nothing that comes near this. And the best thing to do is uh, we sell, this is not part of what I'll be promoting today, but we sell this for $497 a month membership fee. And we have a bunch of people that around the world that just buy this because this just sits next to them at their desk. Whenever they need a new idea, they just come in here and pinch it. I'll play it for you. Can we turn the volume up? Okay. And it is the world's largest online marketing ideas page. Okay? And it's all about showing you how to drive traffic to your website. You see how this all adds up? It is pizza and cream. And in this particular Wow Central, it doesn't matter what business you are, just put my two business types down here, okay? So I'm not good. You can be an accountant, you can be a childcare centre, you can be a hotel, a mechanics, cleaner, you can be a restaurant, you can be a beauty parlour, you can be a spa, real estate, uh, you can be an online specialist, you can be in retail or travel or medical or fitness or the head, the butcher, hair salon, I could go on and on and on. It doesn't matter what business you are, there's a pretty good chance that we're going to be able to cater for you in this Wow Central because what I've done is that I've taken all of the concepts and ideas that I've created throughout the years in my marketing consultancy and I've put them into this magnificent workshop. I know I'm talking a lot, but it is. It's crazy. It's taken us two years to build this site, by the way. Okay, it's a massive website. Um, and you won't find anything like it anywhere in the world. This is a swipe file from heaven an access for you for brochures, for Facebook ads, uh, for website designs. For marketing plans, you'll be able to just swipe full on 20, 30 page marketing plans. Now, we've taken out the confidential information of private clients of mine who I put marketing plans together for, but you've got the essence, the template of marketing plan. So it doesn't matter. Let me just you know, again go through some industries. It doesn't matter whether you're an accountant, whether you're in the spa business, or whether you're a mechanic, or whether you're a cleaner, or you own a restaurant, or you've got an online consultancy business, or you're in retail, or travel, or fitness, or landscaping, or whatever it may be. Um, pretty strong chance that there is a 20 to 30 page full on marketing plan within Wow Central that you're just going to be able to swipe, put your name on all of the, uh, if you like, recommendations that I've given you there, online and offline, and run with it. It is insane. It's like having me sitting next to you, next door, and just providing you with ideas whenever you want them. So, this is a massive swipe file. Wow Central is a massive swipe file. For you to get in and take whatever you want. You can also search on the website, by the way, by advertising. 
So if you just want to learn more about how to use those cookouts, if you just want to learn more about how to put together letterbox brochures, if you just want to learn more about how to get free publicity and send out media releases to get free publicity, that's all in there too. So you can search in our central by advertising category and you can also search by your industry. Now, most people who come on board search by industry. Okay, so that's why well central. It is an incredibly uh, valuable resource. Okay, who thinks having that sitting next to them at the desk would be uh, pretty valuable? Just pinch ideas from it whenever you want. It's just about every industry you could think of in there. Uh, as I said, zoos are not in there. We haven't done a zoo, but pretty much everything else. Uh, uh, that's not what I'm going to be selling today. That's a $497 a month program that people buy from anywhere around the world. But I wanted to show that to you because if you're in the servicing game like I am, where you're selling information, why don't you think about doing something like that? where you create, now that's a big one, you might not have it that big, but nonetheless, why not create an online facility where you can actually then just charge your clients or give it to them for free if you want, it's entirely up to you, uh, for access to it. We have a carpet cleaning company in Sydney who uh, is uh, quite a few million dollars turnover, uh, owned by a, a, a Vietnamese guy called Tam, who's just a lovely guy, and he's one of those you know, fantastic clients like the candy shop guy who does stuff. And uh, I said to him, you're not in the business of selling carpet cleaning equipment to carpet cleaners, you're in the business of helping them make money. And he said, uh, yeah, go on. I said, well, let's put it this way. If you're selling a $10,000 carpet cleaning equipment package to a carpet cleaner, uh, does he then know how to go out and get clients? He said, no, that's a trouble. I said, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we create your own Wow Central, which we've called the Steam Master Marketing Blueprint, because the name of the company is Steam Master. So when you actually buy any carpet cleaning equipment from him, and you're a carpet cleaner, of course, you get access to his version of that. And what I put together for them is Facebook ads, uh, website designs, uh, letterbox leaflets, because if they're doing carpet cleaning in Mrs. Smith's house at number four, they might as well put a letterbox brochure in all the other houses in the street, but they wouldn't know how to do that. So we've created the letterbox brochures for them that they just print their name down the bottom. And he is just over the moon. He keeps on saying to me, we no longer sell a widget. In other words, a feature like a vacuum cleaner, we sell a solution, a business in a box solution. And he's got so much more market share because what he's doing, his Happy Meal toy, the value add, is giving them a marketing blueprint that they can just swipe templates from. Who thinks that they could actually do something like this? Yeah, good, okay, we'll pinch the idea. Or if you come on board, we'll show you how to do it. Okay, um, this is the wheels on luggage uh, hour that I was talking about that's uh, pretty valuable. I just thought I'd show you a couple of examples. You've seen the lolly shop, the pharmacy, a pharmacy in Geelong or somewhere like that down in Melbourne. You wouldn't want to be in the pharmacy business at the moment, would you? Because you've got a 40 ton gorilla that's about to wipe you out. It's called Chemist Warehouse. Warehouse. Okay, so he's got the same problem. So what we've done is I said to him, who's your target audience? Asked exactly like Nola up here, what is the details of your target audience? And of course he said, well, you know what? They're mainly Italians. He said, uh, after the war, we had a lot of Italians come and live around this area and they're all elderly now. So therefore they're ideal customers for us because they need their blood pressure tablets and all this sort of stuff. But he said, we're losing them to Chemist Warehouse because they've got half price prescriptions and everything else. I said, okay, well, in that case, what do you think Italians like? This is why I call it the wheels on luggage hour because the idea is as simple as wheels on luggage, but you don't get it unless you hang around the right people, right? So therefore, what do you think Italians like? And it's not wine, it is? Pasta. Pasta, not pasta? <laughs> but to thank you, Tony. Tony, security will be taking that seriously. You're just being a heckler nuisance, all right? Joanne, could you just look? It's tell him just to sit there, would you? Um, okay, they like because they like coffee. Okay, I just wish someone would have done that, and, but Tony distracted you. I know that. Um, so actually, you're of Italian heritage, aren't you? Yeah, that's why you're saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so therefore, coffee, coffee, coffee. So what have we done? We just turned the front of his pharmacy shop into a coffee shop. Simple as that. But it's a beautiful Italian-themed coffee shop with the little canopies outside the window, and when um, Maria, who's 78 years of age, wants to get a prescription for a bloody heart tablet. Is she going to go to Chemist Warehouse where she's treated like a number and she just stands in a queue? Or is she going to go to the pharmacy where she gets a barista coffee and a bit of Madeira cake? Where do you think she's going to get her prescriptions from? It's so simple. It's wheels on damn luggage. But he wouldn't have thought of that if he didn't hang around the right people. This one here, Home Automation, is a company in Brisbane, as a matter of fact. You know, 16 employees doing quite a few million turnover and they said to me, look, what we do is provide home automation to builders, but to high-end builders, and they put it in homes in Sanctuary Cove and all the upmarket suburbs. And I said, oh, okay, well, what would a home automation, everyone familiar with home automation, basically your lights turn off and on and your air conditioning turns on on the way home from work and you save about 20% in your electricity over the year, but you pay up front 20 or 30 or 40 grand. 
And he said, well, we're into the Sanctuary Cove, Sanctuary uh, Sovereign Island sort of houses. So he said, you know, that basically it's a 40 grand home automation system and we're selling to high-end builders. He said, the trouble is though, we'll sell one or two of them to them and then they, they look for somewhere else because they got it cheaper. I said, aha, well, you want to stop them from leaving. And they said, yeah, that's our problem, churn. I said, okay, well, what do you think builders would like? Um, high-end builders, they said, well, no, you tell me. I said, I think they'd like to go to Vegas. And he said to me, well, what do you mean they'd like to go to Vegas? I said, well, why don't we do this? We'll say, we'll say to the builders now, uh, okay, so it's home automation system, automation, okay. And we'll say that for every $10,000 they spend with you, they will get one Vegas point. One Vegas point, okay. So therefore, once they get 10 points, 10 points, they're going to a Las Vegas convention at the uh, Bellagio Hotel, which you will run every November. And he goes, will I? Yes, yeah, yeah. He said, this is scary. No, 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 it'll, it'll get somewhere. So therefore, in order to get 10 points, how much have they had to spend? 100K. And therefore, the Versace, uh, sorry, the uh, Vegas, Vegas convention, okay, uh, will cost $10,000 for he and his wife to go there, okay? So the builder will take his wife to the convention that you're putting on and you'll pay the 10 grand. Now I said to him, how much would you make out of every home automation system? Let's say it's 40 grand. He said, oh, 20. I said, okay, you make Ned Kelly look like a gentleman, but anyway, okay, that's good. $20,000 you're making out of 40. So out of 100, he used to make how much? 50 grand. Now he's making 40 grand. Do you think he's still bloody happy? You better believe it because these builders will never go anywhere else. Once they've bought five or six of these home automation systems from him and they're up to eight points, do you think that they're going to be lured by a cheaper home automation system? They've only got to get two points to go to the damn conference. And the conference is held in Vegas, of course. They fly over on the Thursday, come back to Tuesday. The conference is on Saturday morning, 9 till 11. You've got a bit of free time, okay? So uh, is it a junket? Of course it's a junket, but you disguise it as a conference because then the bosses at work cannot say that this was a junket. They say, oh, we're going to a Las Vegas conference. And he has not had any churn factor since because this gets people involved in. Now, I have spent a lot of money on radio over the years and Hot Tomato down on the Gold Coast and various other radio stations have taken me around the world. You name it, the Kuala Lumpur, uh, conferences in Fiji, New Caledonia, and the conference is always on a long weekend and the conference goes from nine till noon, all right? But they're rewarding me for spending so much money on radio. I wish Facebook would do it, to be honest with you, because we've spent just in the last month on Facebook $72,000. So we're pretty serious with Facebook. That's why we sort of know how it works. So $72,000 in a month on Facebook's a fair spend, and these bastards give you nothing. <laughs> they give you nothing. Anyway, okay, so um, I wanted to show you this. <clears throat> this is an example of, again, um, something that comes out of that first phone call. This guy joins up. He's on the Sunshine Coast, and that's not his leaflet. I lost his leaflet, but this is a couple of years back. But that's what his leaflet looked like. And he was putting it out around the Sunshine Coast, Maruchidor, places like that, and not doing anything. And uh, why do you think he's not doing anything? Because in that leaflet there, he was showing a feature, okay? When you are selling locks, what are you selling locks to people for? Security. Security. Keep the family safe. So I said to him, do you want to get out of the way and let us do it? Now, we did it on Facebook as well, but I'll show you how we did it with a letterbox drop. And again, I've lost my letterbox drop, so I don't have it. So I've just sketched it up for the purpose of you seeing. But we didn't do a letterbox drop. I said to him, well, why don't you do a door hanger? Just like the menu of the hotel here, right? There's a hole in the top of it and it's a door hanger. And so therefore we sent this out and melted his switchboard. Called in, but you weren't home. No worries, I'll come back tonight. <laughs> On the flip side of that, of course, was all the locks, okay? Was all the locks. And so therefore, guess what? He said to me, wow, this is incredible. I've got the predictive marketing model now that can just turn on phone calls. Okay, or if it's Facebook, send people to his, uh, to his thing. So therefore, that's the feature, and that's the one with the benefits. If you think that I was a bit evil doing that, keep in mind this is a sketch, okay? This is not the real thing. The first sketch that I did was this guy was carrying out two children. So therefore, I was a little bit more subtle with this one. So evil, Dr. Evil. Okay, websites. Who would like to know, and I'm going to have to ask you here that uh, the yes would be shit, yeah, JD. Would you like me to tell you? the magic secret formula to make your website sell a bucket load of stuff. And that would be, uh, yeah, shit, yeah, JD? Shit, shit, yeah. Good, okay. Amazing the power you've got with this microphone. Okay, so therefore, uh, you want to turn your website into a sales machine. You don't want just a website, like we were saying to Nola, you want a direct response website. So if you go back to your website designer and you say to them, 
I don't want a website, I just listened to this know-all in Brisbane and he says, I need a direct response website, you're going to hear crickets in the background. He will not have any, he or she will have any clue what you're talking about. They don't know direct response, all they know is pretty pictures, that's it, all right? Um, okay, and by the way, when I talk about a direct response website, when people do hang around us and they get the benefit of my Rolodex list, we introduce them to copywriters who think like me. So these copywriters understand direct response copywriting, just not copywriting, <laughs> and they're cheap. Uh, and of course, you don't want this guy to be doing it, okay? He is evil and uh, he will not give you a direct response website. He's too interested in manscaping. Uh, okay, so therefore, <laughs> therefore, this is a quick rundown of the sort of stuff that you need. I've just quickly sketched this up. Uh, Cheeky Monkeys Playhouse, uh, sort of childcare centre in Sydney. You don't need it to rhyme. It just says, do you need before or after childcare for your school? Yes, okay, you come to the right place. We show you a welcome video of what it looks like, and then we give you a free report to capture your attempt, to capture your data, okay? And then what we do is that we have video testimonials. And so somewhere on here, Mr. Smith or Mrs. Smith saying, we dropped Tommy off at nine o'clock this morning, and guess what, he was still there when we picked him up at five o'clock, that's the first. Uh, and then we have a Macca's menu of uh, all the sort of things that you do with the child care center, and then you have a call to action. Now let me just show you what that looks like in real life. This happens to be a client who came on board that's got an orange orchard. So this orange orchard is in Victoria, and it's a beautiful orange orchard, and they pick the oranges straight from the trees, crush them and put them into you know, bottles and sell them. Now, do you think you're getting that country practice TV show message out of that website homepage? Who thinks that that is like just awful? They think that you're gonna get turned on by a plastic bottle and a giant one at that. I don't think any one of us would get to that website, oh, I was using a plastic bottle, have you seen that before? We've gotta buy from these people, that's unreal. So there's nothing at all there that they're giving you that tells you the story about the fact that you're gonna get this fresh from the farm. So I get involved and I show them what the layout should look like. This layout's done in around about 20 minutes, by the way. So therefore, when you are sitting there at the moment, I'm sure frustrated with your website designer. Anybody here frustrated because their website designer took months to come up with a wireframe? Just about everyone, okay? It's all bullshit, because they don't know how to design a website. They're just giving you pretty pictures and they take forever to do it. This takes me 20 minutes, all right? So therefore, that gets put together. We say to them, right, it's 100% fresh. Look at the storytelling in this. 100% fresh orange juice straight from the farm. Welcome video. A uh, beautiful video we've done there with um, uh, drone shots of mist coming over the mountains in the morning, all the people picking the oranges and then going up and getting put through the process. Fresh from the farm, no added sugar, no concentrates, no imports, okay, so these are the unique wow factors. Three big reasons you need to, don't just take our word, we give that to our art studio and then it turns out like that, okay, and then you'll see the client is that lady there, that's her father and you'll see how it basically went along the uh, lines of my layout and that's before and after. Who thinks the one on the right sells a shitload more orange juice? Yep. We're talking a lot more orange juice, okay? Because we are creating a country practice TV show story and the other people were selling a gigantic plastic bottle. This one here happens to be an opal uh, mine and it's in Lightning Ridge in Queensland. And this went nuts, absolutely crazy. And uh, I, he's become a good friend, this guy, Greg Mackay, his name is, he's a good mate now. And, uh, but let me say to you, it's probably, well, the amount of money that this made in differences off the Richter scale. But I said to him, can you show me what the opal mine looks like? And he said, well, there's a signage just down the road. And I said, that has to be the worst signage I've ever seen in my life. And he said, well, it's better than the ones around me. I said, well, that doesn't say anything. I mean, who did the signage, Stevie Wonder? Oh, this is uh, it's just awful, you know? And I don't know what the cat's got to do with it. So I said, listen, can I, can I have a look at half people? Uh, can I have a look at your website? He goes, no, I'm not going to show it to you. I said, why not? It's because you'll hurt my feelings. He said, you've got no feelings. Just let me do the website. He goes, oh, okay. I said, what did you call your walk-in mine? He goes, well, walk-in mine. Of course you would. Yeah, it's such a gorgeous name. Now, this was uh, an opal mine. Let's go back to that again. This was an opal mine. I said to him, well, what people do you get through? And when they get through, they put the hard hat on and they go through underground and they get a few little robots with a pick and shovel like that. You see, in, you know, like a bad version of... Uh, Pirates of the Caravan. And I said to him, who comes? He goes, well, mainly seniors in their caravans. They stop off. And I said, wow. And they put the thing on and then they go through the, through the you know, down there. I went, um, do they come out alive? It's like the most boring thing I've ever seen. And he goes, oh, we've lost a few. I said, so we've got to widen the funnel. And by widen the funnel means forget the people just in God's waiting room because you know, the, you're not going to make money out of two and only one comes out. Uh, you want to make money out of families, people with you know two or three children. And he said, well, how are we going to do it? I said, you've got to change the whole thing. It's got to be more exciting. It's got to be an adventure. He said, well, how do we do that? 
And so we changed it to the Lost Treasure Open Mind Adventure, where everyone gets a chance to win $50,000 because when they come out, they scoop in a big sand pit and if they've got no pool there, they're in the draw for $50,000. That costs him, as you know, a couple of grand in insurance. And let me show you how this all came about. By the way, I'm playing this to show you how quickly a website can be put together if you've got the right people around it. So we're playing for the Lost Treasure Open Mind Adventure. What I normally do is sketch out the layout and pencil, and then I'll put the back there too, as you can see here. Now we've ripped a piece out of the treasure map and put the big heading, Lightning Ridges, Leading Attraction, the Lost Treasure Open Mind Adventure. And of course, there's the introductory video. Second panel, is all about the chance to win $50,000, because not only will you enjoy yourself going through this adventure, you could walk away with $50,000. And the next panel is all about what the adventure is all about. So therefore we go through one, two, three, four panels and explain to them exactly what they're going to experience when they come into this adventure. So it's not a secret. Then we had adventurers giving us their video testimonials, telling you just how great it is. And the final panel would probably be uh, just highlighting further why it's an attraction for all ages and for the whole family. So once again, you can see it's got all the components of the direct response manager that I suggest. It's got the big headline, it's got the welcome video, it's got the big prize to give away, and it's got video testimonials and explain to everyone what they're going to experience in this adventure. So we give that to our web designer and uh, that's what he gets and it turns out like that. Okay, so therefore I'll just scroll through that. Uh, and you'll see that uh, it's uh, widening the funnel to you know, basically attract families. So you're going to get four or five tickets instead of uh, two. And uh, before and after, who thinks the one on the right has made them a shitload more money, okay? And it's all about Disney-style storytelling and creating an adventure now, which is widen the funnel to a family, not just people in God's waiting room. And this is the owner of the business, and uh, this is what he had to say. James transformed the whole business with just one idea. The transformation, as I said before, it is just amazing, the transformation, not even in the same class, and has put us in another, total another category where we've actually attracted a larger, a wider range of uh, customers. Our audience that comes to us, our customers that come to us now is far bigger than it was before, which is what JD talks about, widening the funnel, and that's made a major difference to our business. Okay, okay. This is the lolly store that you saw the first slides this morning. That's what their website used to look like, pretty bad. That's a sketch that I did to show them they should be making uh, more out of M&Ms and Mickey Mouse and all the other characters that they have lollies for. And that's what it looks like at the end. So if you have a look at the before over here and the after here, uh, and that's a close up of the after. So what he was doing is he had all these Disney lollies and M&Ms and all that sort of stuff. But if I go back again to show you what the slide looked like in the first instance, he wasn't taking advantage of that. He was showing <laughs> photographs of the aisles of the stores. I mean, yeah, just crazy stuff. Uh, this one, oh, it was a nice email, well, sorry, yeah, email is it or text message? Oh, no, email. Hi JD, after months of planning, designing, videoing, photographing, the new Lolly's uh, website has gone live. Most outstanding candy website I've ever seen. This is the owner of the business. I'm very excited about the results that will come. Thank you to blah, blah, blah. We've just started loading the products onto it, da, 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 da. Uh, when was that? That was uh, September 21, about a month ago. Um, guess what? He didn't have an online presence. So he was only selling his candy from the store. Can you imagine what this is going to do to his turnover? Just to have the able... Now, we can't send chocolate in the middle of summer, but every other candy he can. So the extra additional money comes from him hanging around with, with the right people who say, what, you can't, you're not selling online? Can you imagine how much money you're leaving on the table? This happens to be a pool slide business in Sydney. Uh, that is the rather conservative looking website that they used to have, and that's what it looks like now. Can you see the dramatic difference? We're not talking 10% or 20%, we're talking like dramatic, like absolute revolutionary differences uh, in the website. So you come onto that website compared to, let's go back again to, Sorry, to this one here, and I think you'd find that the conversion rate is uh, around about four times what it used to be. Okay, that's what it looks like these days. That's the owner down there. Okay, just one thing before we finish, and that is, is that uh, if you don't have, uh, if you're in the, in the um, ideas business, uh, advisory business, um, you should think about having for your customers uh, or clients a, uh, a Facebook page. And what we do when anyone comes onto our programs, we've only got two, we've got a smaller one and then we've got the private coaching. Um, we uh, invite them to be part of this closed group Facebook page where they can ask me a question anytime, 24 um, seven. And you know, we have hundreds of people on this thing, but you know, I can still handle it because I only get five or six or seven or 10 questions a day. They're pretty easy to answer, but it keeps everyone pretty sticky in my program because why would you leave when you can actually get access to the so-called uh, guru whenever you want? So if you're in the, 
business is offering advice, you might like to pinch this idea, and this is how it works. Uh, this guy here, for example, uh, hi JD, I've been working on this new landing page, we'll be driving traffic from AdWords, I'm trying to tell the visitors about a problem with da-da-da-da-da. Uh, the problem was he'd like to know how to sharpen up his website so he can drive traffic from AdWords and Facebook, so he posts that. Uh, that's October the 14th at 2.10, and then I get back to him, uh, I think a day later, and I say to him, here's the layout, here it is. You'll see that uh, I'm recommending that you cut to the chase straight away up front, and use a quotation from a mining or construction executive about the benefits, very, very similar to what I said to Nola. Get your customers to sell for you. That's what we did at the Greater Building Society. Can you remember those ads I showed you where they're going, oh, we swapped and we got a free home, uh, holiday? Uh, and immediately tell the audience that you know their problems, show the imagery they can relate to, highlight their problems and challenge, blah, blah, blah. I won't go through it all. He gets that layout. That's all put together for him, okay? And uh, this one here uh, from a lady here in Brisbane, I think. Uh, JD, I'm really impressed by the examples uh, you demonstrated in the seminar, uh, particularly the lolly shop, blah, blah, blah. Here I post two photos of the exterior of our shop, what should we do? So therefore her problem was the interior and exterior was in a desperate need of a makeover. I then actually say to her, okay, this is the sort of stuff that you should do. Here's my quick thoughts on revitalizing the exterior of your mass art center. Please don't take this absolutely literally, but it'll give you some idea of the impact such a refurbishment would make. She'd seen the lolly one and wanted that done for her. So I'm saying here, create a modern signage across there, because uh, if you go back to that, it looks pretty ordinary, doesn't it, up here? It's pretty bad, okay? And then I'm saying you should have imagery there and there. Uh, and look, I won't go through all of them. Basically, what I've done here is I'm just giving a few samples of what you should be doing if you're in the advisory game. Open up a Facebook page and give people membership of it uh, so that they feel important. Um, yeah, and you see here, Whilst the temptation might be at midnight when I'm answering these, the temptation might be to just say, yep, I never do that, okay? It's always going to be a substantial answer because, you know, you're paying me money to be part of the club. So you'll see here, she's asked a question um, uh, and I've said, look, I've checked out the web page. Hope you don't mind me saying this, but everything's all over the shop. There's really no format to the story. There's simply a bunch of pics, blah, 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 blah. I won't read through all of it, but the fact is, is that she gets a layout and an explanation. Uh, and as tempting as it might be to go, oh, yeah, that's good, that doesn't happen. Okay, unless it was good, but anybody that's in this environment aren't really marketers, so there's very few times that I can say that's good. Um, this one here uh, is a guy, I think in Brisbane, uh, picked up a resort job, JD, in service, cleaning palm trees. How's the best way to approach a hotel or resort to pick up other work? What role is the best person to hunt that? Now, on some occasions, these people are giving me too much credit, okay, because the thing is, is that I don't know the hotel managers that you could knock the door on and say, excuse me, can I you know, clean your palm trees? But nonetheless, I then get back to him and say, okay, I'm guessing direct mail campaign consisting of a letter and a brochure, the best would go, showcasing your before and after photos and your wizardry. I'm going to be getting back to you with my thoughts on the brochure layout, but you'd like some copywriting, then go on to our, uh, our Rolodex list. Uh, and then here I say a day later, uh, Jason, here's my thoughts on the double-sided deal flyer that might include blah, 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 and then he's got the brochure. Who thinks having that sort of access to just give you answers at the drop of a hat is pretty valuable? Yeah, and if you didn't put your hand up, I hope you die in your sleep. Because, uh, because that is valuable, okay? I mean, insanely valuable. Uh, okay, so therefore, just one other thing, events. If you're not thinking about events, then you should think about it. Uh, this guy that I'm going to show you here makes that stuff. It's called cloth uh, mesh signage. And he couldn't get into the builders. He was after builders on the Gold Coast and Brisbane, and they wouldn't take his call. He's got a factory in Molondina, and he pumps this stuff out on a big uh, toilet roll. And uh, you've seen them around the fences of construction sites. They're there to stop all the dust from coming out onto the kids. It's an environmental protection authority thing. And he couldn't get anyone to you know, basically take his call. I said, well, why don't you invite them to come to you? Just like you guys have done. You just come to my party. And he said, well, how do we do that? I said, well, you send them out an invitation. I'll do the guest speaking with you because he was the private client at two and a half grand a month. So therefore I do whatever I have to for these clients. And I said, look, I'm milking the crap out of Seinfeld. Why don't you do it? And it's just tell them they're invited to a night at the Versace with um, you know, marketing tips from the guy that works for Seinfeld, blah, blah, blah. And somewhere in here it says that we're just doing this. This is the sort of stuff down here that he makes. We're just doing this to build our brand. When in fact, he's not doing it to build a brand. He's build, doing it because he's going to build a mousetrap. These people are going to come, like you've come to this, and they'll never leave the room alive unless they buy something, just like you won't. Uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so therefore... So therefore, because Simon is not really an implementation coach, Simon is a hitman, aren't you, Simon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so therefore, uh, that's what happened. And uh, he sent out 41 invitations. He got 17 builders to turn up with their wives. And basically, it was $100 a head. It was a room about half the size in the Versace, but they had a beautiful dinner. At $100 a head, 17 couples, that's 34 people. That was $3,400. Wait till you hear what he made out of it. 
I got up and did a little mini version of this, and then at, at around about the 8.30 mark, when these builders were half pissed, uh, I said to them, listen, um, um, you were you know, shouted dinner tonight and you got access to all this marketing stuff uh, sponsored by this mob, AdFence. Okay, and he said, uh, they all go, yeah, I go, okay, well, listen, who would like Trond Smith, who was the owner of AdFence, to pop up and just have a chat to you? These were the guys that would not take his phone call the day before. They're patting him on the back now, pushing him up. That was all set up that he was going to come up, but he pretended that, oh, no, I don't want to come. Well, they pushed him up onto the stage, right? So he comes up, and I, I said to him, mate, what's the difference between AdFence and anyone else? Because this signage thing you get from anywhere. He said, well, we've got the big printing machine that does it here in, on the Gold Coast. So I bring up a slide, and the printing machine is the size of a you know, house. And everyone goes, wow, they never knew that. And, uh, and I said, well, what's the benefit? He said, well, the benefit is, is that when they buy through me, any of these builders like Metricon or, uh, or Masterton Homes or Stockland, they get it at a much cheaper price. This is not price discounting, this is price comparison. Right? And he said, I'll give you an example. Metricon up in Darwin last week got some quotes uh, for doing quite a few construction sites, and they came in at 34 and 38,000. And I said, what do you do it for? He said, 14,900, because we produce the thing. The others are putting margin on margin. They rushed the stage like he was a pop star, okay? Because they just could not believe this. I left that night, um, and uh, there was a Wednesday night. At Thursday morning, he rings me and says, guess what we did last night? I said, what? He said, it cost us 3,400 to put on. We took 272 grand in sales that night, right? And then on Friday, he asked me if I'd come to his birthday party on Friday night in the Gold Coast. So Garn and I went, and he said, 24 hours later, that 272,000 have gone to 400. So $400,000 in sales out of a $3,400 investment at the Versace. So if you have not thought about sell once to many, you should think about sell once to many. And this is him. His um, first ideas for our market. Our, our turnover is probably in, the, in, in this first month of really talking about their promotions. Double. You just uh, institute the uh, web factor ideas, and our turnover has doubled in a month. It is that it is. Just from National Inquiry, conversions probably gone from 25 30% to up around 78%. Um, that alone has pushed us to capacity. Nola, Nola, when we're talking about testimonials, have you noticed those so that I can? combat any scepticism that you guys might have that, oh, it's just a fast talker and none of this stuff is real. Have you noticed I've used testimonial after testimonial after testimonial throughout this whole thing? You can't, you, know, you can't buy enough Crown Lager to make people say that. So the point is, is that that's what you should, everyone should be doing, and particularly in your instance, Nola, is getting people to be social proof for you, not just online, but also on your website, okay? Okay, so that's about it, guys, and uh, we've got about 10 minutes to go. Is everybody happy if I actually, uh, well, let me ask this so that I've got some ego boosting. Who would like me to uh, reveal to you how you can get part of all this uh, magic? Hell yes. Hell yeah. Who said hell yes? <laughs> I like you. You have to come on tour with me. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, firstly, before I do this, who has been to lots of these seminars before whereby you're a little bit pissed off because when you get there, you get the, you know, the guy up front, normally it's guys, there's some girls that do it, mostly guys, uh, and uh, it's normally 50% content and 50% sell, and you go, oh, no, that's all I did all day. Do you uh, agree that you've got 90% content before I've done the sell? Yeah. Okay, so I think we've been pretty fair, and so if you do jump online and start making any comments, uh, hopefully they'll be complimentary because... What we believe is that uh, you know, if you're going to hold these things, even though the tickets are for free, you want to make it wildly uh, valuable. And then you know, if at the end of it, 10% you know, of the presentation is sell, well, we're going to put food on the table just like you do. So I don't think anyone would begrudge you that. Okay, we've got two programs. Uh, okay, and uh, if you're doing uh, $400,000 or more, or maybe even $300,000 or more, you should think seriously about the Masterclass program, which is where I become your private uh, marketing coach. And Simon, do you mind if you just pop up for a second? You don't mind? And Simon's uh, very shy because he's uh, a dwarf. Um, and so therefore, is there any chance at all you could just give Simon a round of applause, please? Okay, well, whoa, 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 that, that's enough. That's enough. I mean, I yeah, otherwise he's going to be, yeah, taking over, taking over the real guru. Okay, so this is called the Masterclass, okay, program. And it's private coaching. Okay, so this is private coaching. And basically what happens is that Simon and I, my implementation coach, basically take over uh, the marketing for your business. So that's normally three, four, nine, seven a month by 12 months, okay? Uh, and what we do at these events is that we take $1,000 off, okay? So therefore it's $2,497 a month by 12 months, okay? Now, the thing is, is that, um, the thing is, is that when you join this program, 
uh, we send you a questionnaire like tomorrow uh, and then you fill that questionnaire in. It's an online one and you simply uh, just give us all the details about your business and your turnover and who your competitors are and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, basically what happens is that uh, Simon jumps on a call with you pretty quickly after that and just has a chat with you to make sure that he understands or we understand everything. We then have a meeting. And then a few days after that, normally within the week, uh, both of us have a chat with you. It's normally Zoom or Skype or phone call, whatever search. Uh, and then after that, within 10 uh, working days, we actually put the marketing plan together for you. So you saw that video earlier, where basically it's like a 20, 30, 40 page report. And that plan is put together and put together customized for your business. And uh, Simon, in terms of the online world, uh, before we go any further, can you just give uh, a bit of a background on your Facebook uh, knowledge and know-how because if there's anyone in the country that knows how this thing works, uh, I've got a pretty good handle on it, but also uh, Simon does as well. So can you just mention maybe the sort of stuff that you do? Yeah, sure. We've been in the digital space for about seven years now and um, we've sort of opened up our digital marketing agency for the last three years working with JD, well, coming up to three years now. So that's been pretty exciting. And uh, what's been really interesting is I, I met JD through this course that you're looking at today. And I actually enrolled in paid for the course too. So uh, sort of really hands on, on your side of the table, to sort of have that experience of stuff. So what I was doing is I was um, grabbing some of JD's ideas that he taught and applying them to my own business and to my own clients and saw their businesses just skyrocket. So it was amazing. So I coupled that with what we were doing in the digital space with Facebook promotions. And uh, we've got a really um, cool little team of uh, technicians and creative people who uh, put campaigns together. So uh, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, one of JD's clients actually reached out to us and said, could you help us with uh, uh, the implementation of the Facebook strategy? So we, uh, he was paying like $200 a lead. Uh, we first started off, our first campaign was actually generating this for about $65. By the way, this is a property investment advisor, yep. okay? So therefore this guy is wanting to sell property uh, opportunities uh, to mum and dads who uh, you know, should retire wealthy if they've got enough investment properties. So that's who this client was. Yeah, so this guy is a very different client for, from our own the mill clients in terms of his ad spend, he's spending about $300 a day. So we want to make sure that we gave him a, a great return on all his experience. So our technicians went together, went to work, and we put together about 40 different ad campaigns, rapidly testing different headlines, different images versus video, different body copy, to uh, to optimize the ad to see which ads were going to convert the best. Because they're spending, you know, over 100 grand a year on ads, ad spend. It's uh, we want to make sure that we get it right, so we want to get it right as fast as we can. And so did that, and we got at least what he was paying like two. Yeah, 150, 200 dollars. We first started off at 65, and then the next week we had them down to about 45. The week after that, 35. The week after that, about 20. Then 15. Now they're around about uh, between seven to 10 to sometimes 12 dollars to 14 dollars per lead. So, yeah, amazing result. And what that means is the top of the funnel is uh, huge now. So, uh, and just as he puts through, if everything uh, stays the same in his business, and it also helps him with other things too. So it went from a leads issue, he was uh, struggling getting leads and getting the volume of leads to now a conversion issue. So now we're having conversations around conversion, what he's saying on the phone and he's getting to, to make the outbound call. So yeah, it's been a really, really interesting journey. They're super happy and they're, they're making money hand over fist, which is... Uh, and what I want to get across to everyone is this Facebook thing is a beast. Mm. It's a beast in the sense that it can be an incredible money spinner for you if we, we've got some problems audio there, but uh, so it can be an incredible money spinner for you if you get it right. And it can be an incredible vacuum money sucker if you get it wrong. Um, and yeah, this particular client that we speak of, um, uh, we've tested, I think 41, 42 different ad sets yep, to yep. get to where we are. So in other words, that's 41 or 42 different ads to get to the stage now that he's bringing in leads for you know between seven and twelve dollars, but that took some time. That took some time to get there. Okay, when I say some time, a month or two. Um, now the thing is, is that uh, you won't find, I think, anything as valuable as this anywhere in the world for that sort of price. Now I know that you no, know, I can talk it up because it's my program. But the reason I say you won't find anything like that is because guess what? When people say to me, "Oh, well, all these wonderful case studies you've shown me, um, do you know, can you guarantee that would work for them?" Uh, for me, are you going to double my business? I said, no, I can't guarantee that. You might have just got out of jail. Okay, I can't guarantee that. Um, I have uh, real estate agents on board 
And the first thing I do is say to them, have you ever sold a home within 30 days? Because normally if a real estate agent puts a uh, brochure in your letterbox, that brochure says like for the last 50 years, um, we've got buyers in your area, we're looking for listings, would you like to get a free appraisal? You know? um, what we do is that we go through RP data and put out 10,000 appraisals. That's what we do. And their listings were never a problem ever again. We put a door hanger with a Commonwealth Bank check that says 1.2 million. We just get some monkeys to handwrite 1.2 million from RP data because that's what that house is worth. And on the flip side, it says this is what your house is uh, worth as a result of some software program. If you'd like to talk to us about downsizing because the kids have left the blower, ring this number. Do you know what happens? I mean, a real estate agent will tell you that normally they will get two or three listings out of every 10 appraisals over a period of months. We're just blowing that out of the water because these real estate agents, none of them are marketers. They all say, well, you know, well, you say to a real estate agent, um, what do you do for a living? I say, we market homes. Say, Good, let's have a look at your marketing qualifications. You hear crickets in the background. They were driving a bus last week, okay? So they don't understand marketing. That's why they put these shit one-sided brochures in your letterbox that say, we've got buyers in your area, please. That was the Flintstones. I mean, that was the, when I was a kid, I used to pick them up. You put a freaking turbocharged powder keg keg uh, 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 check for $1.2 million. I'm telling you, if we got home tonight after this and there was a check for X million dollars on our door uh, handle and it said, this is what we think your house is worth, asterisk, asterisk, RP data, don't hold us to it. Would you like to get a free appraisal to just top that? I'd be on the phone in a heartbeat. We've got six Gen Y kids, four of them are left and we need to downsize, okay? We don't need the big house anymore. But I'm certainly not going to ring them if I just got the normal leaflet in the letterbox. So what we do is that we pick the, oh, by the way, in real estate agents, when you say to them, have you ever sold a home in uh, 30 days? Every single real estate agent in the world will say, yeah, but not often. It doesn't matter, not often. I don't get 812,000 phone calls like I did for New Idea every week. But that's what got you in the room. I said, I've got 812,000 leads. Would you like to know more about it? Well, of course you come. I'm honest. I tell you what that was. But I don't get 800,000 calls for every client every week. But I tell you what, that got you in the room as a prospect. So a real estate agent won't sell a home in 30 days all the time. But guess what? The headline that he should be putting on his car and on every piece of communications is, would you like your home sold in 30 days? Because I've done that. And then all of a sudden, we've got an agent in Barossa Valley in Adelaide that said the moment he put that on his car and parked it outside his real estate agent, he got 12 appraisals in the first week and three listings. And the guy came in and said, I want to talk to the guy that sells homes in 30 days. He said, well, I don't always sell in 30 days. He said, it doesn't matter. If you're that smart at marketing to be able to put that claim out there, I want you to be selling my house. And so what happens is that we've got this old world big idea, uh, if you like, facility. I work with, uh, with, with Simon to make sure that that actually gets communicated in the online world. And that's why it's a pretty good match. Um, now, sorry, mate. You said, yeah. I want to say, um, because you spoke about real estate agents, we had a real estate agent client and we did um, your $100,000 promotion for them. And so just, just for you guys to know in the room, we spent about $1,000 on Facebook ads. And so I think we had like 50 leads. So it's about $20 a lead. I think they're 48 leads. So it's like 21 bucks a lead. And out of those $21, uh, $21 leads, uh, 48 of them, he got um, four listings just in that 90 days, which was awesome. So he didn't own the business, but he was just a salesperson. So for him, it meant in that 90 days, an extra $41,000 from that promotion, in addition to all the other income that he makes. But just right. from that promotion, $41,000 in 90 days, pretty good going. Pretty good going for and that. that was just a snapshot. That's not looking at all the organic business that he's going to roll on from that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Through Open Homes for those four listings that he got and sold. Yeah. Uh, he's got other business that comes in as referral from that. So yeah, amazing stuff when it's executed properly. Well, just so you know, so Simon was one of you, okay? So he was in your seat and he bought into my program a couple of years back. I could see the skills that he had. Uh, he has his own consultancy business, but what we've done is that I'm sharing part of that income with him to be my implementation coach. Because what was pissing me off was that people would pay me that and some people would still sit on their hands. And anyone in the advisory game, can you understand I'm business coaching? I bet you go through it or you just, you know, pull your hair out. It's going, you get to go nuts. And so therefore, um, what I decided is that we need to make sure that we have almost a done for you thing. And so therefore, I share some of that income with Simon and he won't run side saddle with me, you know, basically Tonto to make sure stuff happens and uh, it works pretty well. And Simon is, you know, very straight up there. There's nobody that goes to him and says, oh, can we cut JD out? Well, normally that doesn't happen anyway, but he wouldn't let it happen. Uh, so we are a team. Uh, I reckon we ought to call ourselves, let me think, the dream team. I think the dream team. Okay, so therefore, that's that program. If you're doing over 300, dollars maybe $400,000,
and you, know, you should be able to afford two and a half a month and you will get absolutely private coaching, okay? By the way, you have 24-7 uh, access to us. So therefore, there's none of this, oh, you get two phone calls a month or any of that bullshit because we know you might need us heavy one month because you've got a big expo coming up at the convention center and you want us to you know, critique the, the stand that you're putting up with the jelly burns uh, and all that sort of stuff. And so therefore we say fine, because you'll milk the crap out of it one month, but then you might not need us so much the next month. So it's the merry round the swing. So we just make sure that you're available any time. And when I say, uh, you, if you say to me, oh yeah, but can you guarantee, you know, can you double our business? No, I can't because I don't know what your products or services are at the moment. I don't know whether you just got out of jail, but how's this for a guarantee? Okay, it is a 12 month program, 12 month program. If you find out that we're horse shit at any time throughout that, just leave. Is that pretty fair? I, I, I would expect, let's do that again if we write, I, I would expect something like a, wow. Uh, not, yet, no, no, not yet, please. For goodness sake. So therefore, if you find that we're BS at any time throughout this, uh, in other words, we're backing ourselves, you can just leave. <laughs> But do you, who thinks you can't get any fairer than that? Okay, 12 month program, I'm giving the opportunity to piss off whenever you want. Um, now, that doesn't happen very often. There's been one or two dishonest people who I you know, wouldn't want to do business with ever again, whereby they've milked the crap out of us in that first couple of months and then they thought they knew it all and took off. Uh, well, basically what happens now is that I advertise on Gumtree uh, an iPhone 8 for $29 and put their mobile uh, in there, okay? Um, <laughs> And I do the Facebook sign for that. You do the yeah. Facebook, yeah, like basically, yeah. So we destroy their lives and there's some Italian friends of mine, kneecappers we call them. Uh, but, you know, look, seriously, I think if you back yourself as we're doing, you won't get much better than that. I mean, yeah. who thinks that if, you know, we're offering you leave and we won't worry about it? You know what I do? Because if you left, I just hold another one of these and fill your spot. That's all we do. Okay, so therefore, if you're not doing the three or $400,000 worth of turnover and you still would like to work with us, let me just spend three or four minutes, if you don't mind, going through this program. So that's called the Masterclass. This one's called the Wow Marketing Academy, and of course, it's much cheaper. And what comes with that is this system. So therefore, you get the electronic version of that. The real book version of that is $450 a book, so you won't get that, but you will get the electronic version of that, which is more uh, sensible these days anyway. So you've been through all of that. I told you the 12 steps in that. And that means is that Whenever you need some assistance, like for example, we had a vegan food uh, guy on recently. He makes the vegan food at home, him and his wife, and then they home deliver it. He contacted me via the Facebook page and said, JD, how do I get free publicity for this? Because I don't have a big budget in terms of advertising. I said, well, just go to uh, where it is. See, can we see free publicity? Go to module eight, page 138, steal the press releases that we put together, and then just send it out to all the news places. Guess what? He sent it out 24 hours later, Channel 7 had him on their news for three minutes, doing a three-minute story about home delivery vegan food. He went from 120 to 440 customers overnight. And he said to me, his wife and he hasn't slept since because obviously, you know, they're a you know, cottage industry, but he's pretty happy. And now what he's doing, because he didn't think about scaling, and that's another thing we help people with is scaling, is that he hadn't thought about licensing this to other people who had combi vans and dreadlocks. And so therefore, basically what he's doing now is licensing his vegan food delivery business to people in Sydney and other places, but he wouldn't have done that had he not got smashed by Channel 7's news item. But he got Channel 7's news item because he went here and just took out the template. The other thing you get with this is uh, twice a month, uh, every second Thursday, we have a live teleconference with, uh, with myself and uh, Simon's on that. And the reason I do that is because I'm sick of seeing these people buy into programs where you've got the old fart guru up the front that does everything, and then all of a sudden you get the 23-year-old that services the account. You're not 23, are you? No. Okay, good. Uh, and also you never get to talk to the so-called guru. You never get to talk to him, okay, or her. And so therefore what we've done is made sure that there's interaction. So every fortnight there's a teleconference. And before that teleconference, there's a webinar that you can watch as well. And then the Facebook private uh, group whereby you can ask questions at any time. I've shown you all what that's all about. Basically you get to ask anything you want and Simon or I will answer it. And this is a big one, the supplier network. We call it the Rolodex list, and this is where basically you get contacts of all of our graphic artists, the Facebook ads, the copywriters, website designers, and all of these people are direct response driven. They aren't your arty farty, antsy pantsy uh, copywriters or direct response people. These are pe sorry, or branding people. These are people that live in the direct response space that we do. Um, so it's marketing done yeah, for you. Basically, normally if you go to the uh, wowmarketingacademy.com.au, you'll see that this is $1,497 a month normally. So you multiply that out over 12 months and it's uh, $17,964. Um, 
but you know what, because you have taken half a day of work to come here, uh, I'm going to give you a special deal. Does anyone want to know what that special deal is? Yeah. No, they said there wasn't enough. This wasn't enough. What do you say? Excitement? Yeah. Uh, anybody want to know what that special deal is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right here. So there's two options here. You can pay $497 now and get started. Uh, and over 12 months, that's 5964 uh, and uh, or if you wanted to actually uh, pay up front today, you get the whole thing for three nine nine seven, uh, and uh, obviously you're saving yourself a couple of thousand dollars. So you can actually do either a payment plan, which is nearly five hundred dollars a month multiplied by twelve, or you can upfront payment at three nine nine seven today. So it's entirely up to you. Now, why do you think I say this? I'm teaching you a lesson here. If you say to us, "Yeah, well that's fine. I'll go home and talk to my wife or husband. That's fine. Well tomorrow you pay the full money." And I want to teach you that that's what you need to do with direct response marketing. And we're strict about that, by the way. There's no, oh, well, I was there yesterday. No, you don't buy today, then tough luck, okay? You pay the full money. That's what direct response is. You've got to make sure that you uh, accommodate uh, the answer to any fence setters. And so therefore, you've seen here, I don't know what else you need to you know, sort of be convinced it's a pretty good investment. So therefore, it's available today, but not tomorrow. Uh, okay, but, but, but wait. Yeah, no, there's no steak knives. Okay. Right. So therefore, what we'll do is if you want to come on board today, uh, we will give you entry uh, into Wow Central. So that Wow Central large uh, library of ideas, which uh, you saw the video of before, which normally sells for $4.97 a month, uh, we'll throw that in. So therefore, you've got that gigantic swipe file. So aside from having the 12-point system in the online version of that, uh, you've also got a swipe file from heaven where you can just pinch anything you want. And it's pretty much uh, covering, I'd say, you know, 90% of every industry or business type in Australia. Um, okay, and the other thing is, if you want to make the upfront payment today, what we'll do is give you the mini me version of this. So that's the big version, and we'll give you the mini version because that doesn't cost so much for us to print. So therefore, if you want to pay upfront today, which is a 3997, we'll give you that to take home. And then I'll ring you in the morning and give you an exam. You have to read it tonight. Go through to 2am, I don't care. You see, the thing is, the reason I can give that to you if you want to pay up front today and not that, with that, you'd have to take out an insurance policy because we've had people who fell asleep when they were reading this in bed and broke a rib. So therefore, we don't want to take that health risk, but we will give you that one tonight, uh, today, sorry. If you want to walk away with that today, then uh, just pay up front. And uh, I think uh, the masterclass coaching, uh, really, at the end of the day, I've put it all up here, but that's just a reminder for you. My view is, is that if you are, uh, a business doing three or four hundred thousand or more, that should be something that you only consider. I can't see why you'd want the smaller package if that's the level of your business because you get us and you get unlimited use of us. Now, by the way, if you milk the crap out of it and said, Could I have a call tomorrow? Can I have a call tomorrow? Can I have a call? You keep on ringing Jody, we would probably part friends. We'd probably say, Look, we're not that desperate for the money because it's all, you know, swings and merry-grounds. We're going to be serious about this. But you know, you've got pretty much unlimited contact to us, but if you're milking the crap out of it where you're contacting me every minute and Simon every minute, then of course we'd probably shake hands and you know, say thank you very much, it's been nice knowing you. But I don't think most people are like that. I think most people are normal. Well, we've found most people are normal. Yeah. Except this table over here, there's a few, oh, oh sorry, it wasn't that table. Yeah. Um, so therefore, uh, guys, if there's, let me just ask you this, who would be, who thinks that if you had this combination and you had this sort of template behind you, uh, who thinks if you had us as your marketing managers that you'd probably have a pretty good jump on your competitors? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's just entirely up to you. I know that budget comes into play here, but at the same time, uh, you know, Einstein said it, if you expect something to change and uh, you're keeping on doing the same thing over and over again, well, that's insanity. So uh, I believe it's a pretty good investment. Um, what we're going to do, if you're interested in uh, this particular program, I know that there's probably some more questions that you might like to ask. So what we've done is we've got that little room next door that if anyone was interested in talking to us about that program, you don't have to put your hand up to say that you're going to buy anything, but if you're interested in just talking about that program and getting some questions, we're just going to invite you to come next door and Simon and I will be there to answer any questions. And the reason we say that is because the academy program, obviously, I've given you all the inclusion. Oh, by the way, with the masterclass program, everything you saw in that academy program comes with it. So you get everything there, but you get the customised marketing plan, you get access to us full time. Okay, so therefore, that's the big difference. Obviously, we're with you throughout the entire year. You've got an implementation coach helping you do it. Um, okay, so therefore, can I just ask this? Anyone would like to pop next door and just have a chat if you want to ask any questions? Okay, we'll do that and we'll, for you who are interested in the Masterclass one, pop next door and I'll answer any questions with Simon. And for anyone else that's interested in the Academy program, which is either 490, I mean, 
for goodness sake, if I was you, I'd just sign up today. Even if you do the wrong thing and piss off in a month or two's time, $497 to get access to all of this sort of stuff is pretty insane. I can't believe anyone would even leave without at least thinking about that one. Uh, and if you want uh, to save the money, of course, uh, then it's 3997 up front and you'll walk away with that today. Thank you very much, guys. If uh, you enjoyed this, then what I'd like you to really do, regardless of whether you end up becoming a member, is jump onto Facebook, where the Institute of WOW, of course, uh, and just say some nice things. If you've got nothing nice to say, then go nowhere, okay? Say, say nothing to anybody. You never came here. I never spoke. Uh, and if you're going to become a member, I, uh, I really, you know, I love you. And if you're not becoming a member, uh, I hope you uh, catch a cold, okay? Uh, or even possibly die in your sleep. Uh, okay, guys, thank you very much. We'll see you uh, next time. And uh, Jody, 